Glory to God. We thank God for the gift of another day. This is Life is Spiritual presents the Erica documentary number 21. My name is Baba Zion and I'm here with my beautiful, gorgeous wife. Erica Mukisakimani, <laughs> a.k.a. Mama Maisha or Mami Zion. Amen. Amen. And this is documentary number 21 and we're here with a special guest, Erica's dad, Emmanuel Waiswa Brown, Omugaga Brown is here. <laughs> <laughs> Omugaga means rich. <laughs> yes, the rich man Brown <laughs> is also here. Yeah. And we thank God for you. Yeah, amen. God bless you. Amen, amen. amen. So before we get into this, I believe we should start with a word of prayer as yes. usual. Okay. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallowed holy righteous and true is your name may your kingdom find limitless expression in the earth may your will be done may your plan and purpose find limitless expression through your servants through your vessels through your creation we pray mighty father that your will and your the secrets that you want revealed may be revealed teach us the deep and secret things that we may share them that your church may be edified and encouraged and inspired we pray mighty father and cover the the viewers in the precious blood of jesus spirit soul and body there shall no evil befall them neither shall any plague come near their dwelling we pray that jesus may be glorified that your word may have the preeminence and that your holy spirit may administer this conversation that we are having here, that the church may be edified, encouraged, inspired, strengthened, and energized to face their futures. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Yes. amen. Um, I'm so honored and I thank God for the gift of life and thank God to still have my dad alive. Many people uh, lost their parents and I understand it's a it's a painful experience, but I thank God for enabling my dad stay up to today to also witness and, and, and share what he has, you know, with you. We, I wish sometimes my grandmother was alive to also share her testimony, but uh, yeah, God knows everything. So uh, I'm continuing with my experience. Today we are talking about sex magic. The effect of sex on somebody's life when they don't do it uh, according to the will of God, you know. God purposed sex for marriage and it's supposed to take place between a husband and a wife. And that sex is supposed to uh, help us procreate, you know, and multiply and have dominion. And the people in the kingdom of darkness don't want to hear of anything like that. That's why they've come up with so many ways of depopulating and they call it planned parenting. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it sounds good, but it's not as good as you think because the enemy disguises to be the angel of oh, light. light. Yes. So he comes up with things, anything that the enemy is cooking, he makes it look delicious, but it's poisonous. So now sex has been misused and abused. That's why today we are struggling with, uh, many people are struggling with identifying their gender. They don't know if they are male or female. They don't know if he is he or they. they all this comes because they have opened up their lives That's to right. the enemy. And now the enemy has possessed them. And now they don't understand if they are themselves because they feel another person is in them. Another person that wants to ex or manifest himself through them. So uh, I'm just going to give my experience and then my, I will allow my dad to also share his own opinion and experience. And then uh, Tim, will also my husband, will also uh, share his own experience and whatever God is leading him to share with you. I know it's going to be a long video, but I know it's going to help you to understand what exactly is happening. Many times when we talk about the LGBTQ, people think that we are hateful or we are extremists or we are judgmental 
but we are trying to save you from what is coming, from what the enemy is preparing for, for humanity. Remember, I served the enemy for 18 years. And one of the things I realized from the day I landed into Satan's arms is that he hates humanity with a passion. The fact that we are created in God's image is enough for us to be hated by the enemy. You don't have to do anything to Satan for him to hate you. The fact that you remind him of his boss the one he rebelled against is enough for him to hate you to a point of planning to steal the treasures that God has given us. Among the treasures that God has given us, that, that is life. No wonder the Bible says that Satan came to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came to do the opposite, to give us life and life more abundantly, more abundantly where we are not even supposed to lack. We are not supposed to fall sick. We are not supposed to live in pain, in, in shame and in guilt. But the enemy brings that to destroy us. So whatever we are seeing that is happening is not new to us, to most of us. Why it's appearing to be new to you is because the Bible says that my people perish due to lack of knowledge. Many people don't take time to research. Many people don't take time to read the Bible. Many people are so lazy to uh, look for information. So when these things happen, they appear to be new. These things appear to be new to people, but they are not new. These things have happened from the, 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 those early days of Genesis where there was mixing of uh, fallen angels with human beings and giving birth of hybrids. These things have been happening and they are still happening today. So people are selling their souls to the enemy. And by selling their souls to the enemy, they are giving him their everything, their energies, they are giving him their life, they are giving him everything so they are working on remote control when we talk about selling the souls it's not only people who sell their souls that become slaves to the enemy but also people whose souls are trapped by the enemy become their victims so there is a person going to sell their soul in exchange for something sometimes they get it sometimes they don't get it that's why you see many people regretting they say i sold my soul to the devil and that's that's a jay -Z, was it jay-z who said that that he sold his soul to the devil it was Kanye. Kanye, yeah, Kanye West. He said that he sold his soul to the devil. We've had many celebrities saying they sold their souls to the devil. But again, there are those like me whose souls were stolen. And when my soul was stolen through a devil agent who was a celebrity, I found myself now mixing in those circles. And I started seeing the things that are done that people don't understand. Why are celebrities sleeping around with so many girls? Celebrities have, they have wives and the wives know what they are doing, but the wives don't stop them from doing whatever they are doing because it is through sleeping with those girls that they are getting the anointing to do the things that they are doing. Why? They are stealing the energies. They are stealing the force, the life force from these innocent, from these innocent girls and they are leaving them empty. So when they go to perform because of the anointing that they are carrying, girls are lasting after them. There is one celebrity I know uh, whenever, uh, you know, we had groups, there were different music groups. So whenever he would come with his queen dancers, he would park the car and, and leave the wife in the car. And then he, before he's invited, there are those uh, dressing rooms, you know, those bars. He would start misbehaving with these girls and the girls are also misbehaving. When I talk about misbehaving, I'm trying to be polite because this is a Christian platform. Like it is sexual uh, arousing each other kissing and, and cuddling and doing all those things with these girls, then that would give him the hype so that when he goes on stage and he's performing, all the women are going so crazy for him. Why? It is by using these girls that he's able to perform with that energy that will attract people towards his music because his music is termed as love music. That's why I argue with many Christians when they say, can't we just listen to love music from a secular artist? The source is very important. Right. This musician, before he comes to perform, he's sexually uh, arousing himself with these 
little girls, they are young girls. We were young, like teenagers. They are young. The enemy knows they have a lot of energy. So he steals them and then he leaves them empty. Then he uses because he has sold his own vacuum. He has sold his own energy, his soul. So he has, he's empty. So he needs to refill to be able to charge and then go and also trap more souls. So the women are lasting after him. And when he's performing, he's going to remove his shirt and he will show the six pack. Or I don't know, or in the next five years, maybe there will be uh, 12 packs. I don't know. The enemy wants anything that can arouse somebody emotionally and put the spirit of lust. So the couples that are going there to be entertained, the women are lasting for this musician because he's anointed for that. And then now when they get back, there is masturbation. When you admire somebody who is not your husband or your wife, you've already slept with them. So when you're masturbating and you're thinking about this musician, it's not the musician that you're sleeping with. He's gone back home to his wife. So you, you're sleeping with the demons that this musician is working with. And that's why you get possessed and then you become addicted to the musician that you feel like killing anybody that talks about him. You feel like personally strangling that person. And I know very well that by talking about these things, I have many enemies because many people are bound. And when you bring light where there is darkness, of course, darkness has to, to scatter. And the enemy is afraid of you knowing the truth. So you pay your money. For somebody to come and, in, and possess you with demons of lust and the girls that he has been sleeping with, when, when they are dancing, they are half naked. They are bending over for you. You're seeing they are, they are, you're almost, they are almost revealing everything. They are shaking their bums. In our culture, when somebody is cursing you, they will rem <laughs> if your parent is cursing you and then they bend for you, that is it. You just need your parent and a pastor to reverse that curse. It is, it, it, they would only bend for somebody when they are cursing in our culture. In, 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 I don't know about the other cultures, but if they tell you that your auntie, especially the aunties, if they tell you that your auntie bent for you, it means your auntie cursed you and they have nothing to do with you. So now these people are dancing and they are entertaining you and they are bending for you. They are squatting for you. They are women. And they are showing you abominations. And people are paying. You know how many people pay to go to those strip clubs? They pay to, to just go and get possessed. But they don't know why their lives are going down. And there are, are women that a man can sleep with. And then his financial status goes down. No matter what efforts he has or how brilliant he is, because of the demons that are operating in their lives, whenever a person sleeps with them or has an affair with them, that's the beginning of their downfall. From health, from finances, from like everything literally goes down. And I used to work with such girls and those girls are, employed to work in bars in clubs because of their beauty i told you the enemy does not just take anybody he looks for the cream for those people that have uh, the what it takes to trap like the one factor yes the one girl who can trap like a hundred men works for the enemy by the time he's done with that one girl he has destroyed her also he has killed her uh, there is a, a former queen dancer of a, of a certain uh, group uh, she, she died recently in Uganda. She died recently, but you could not compare her pictures of when she was in the video of those musicians and when she died. When she died, she was skin and bones. You could just see the bones literally, uh, and the skin is just tied to the bones. That's how the enemy had, had fed on her. But in the video, she was very beautiful. This girl was so beautiful in the video, but when you look at the photo before she died, you can just see the bones, but just the skin covering the bones. And that's how the enemy leaves them after he has used them to win thousands to the kingdom of darkness. So uh, I started now, when I was initiated, I started working with some politicians and some prominent businessmen. And I'm not going to mention names, but people can tell because uh, I'm, I'm talking about things that are happening right in people's faces and they have no idea of exactly what is happening. There is a pilot 
uh, he has he had a he had a music band and and he had many uh, beautiful celebrities uh, performing in his band and that man he would pay uh, he would pay money for young girls to go to his place and he would sleep he would sleep with uh, with those young girls sometimes he never slept with them what he would do he would allow the girls to sexually perform like to have sex with each other with toys sexual toys and all that so that he witnesses now when these girls are, are having sex and he's witnessing he is stealing something from them that they don't know but while he's doing that he's showing them some dollars he's throwing some few dollars on them and the girls are excited they think they have made it they think it's they have landed on a good deal but they don't know that they have sold it's like Esau and Jacob Esau sold his birthright for just soup pottage yes so now they are selling their birthright for for just a few dollars and he he would work with some prominent rich men and take these girls to an island and that island they would throw parties and these rich men would throw money to the girls while they are stealing their f their 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 is it their their energies he's stealing their destinies he's stealing from them and after they have used them they don't want to hear from them whether they are pregnant they have given them enough money to abort and remember when you abort you're sacrificing to molech so these people's businesses are now flourishing there is one that the enemy has used one prominent uh, rich man in the city the enemy has used him and now he has dumped him recently he was in prison but he was known for using his money to sleep with girls and he was proud of it why because when you allow the enemy to sleep like sleeping with somebody who is not your husband is sleeping with the devil directly because the consequences are always not good i'm not saying that uh, the people that are watching are perfect or we that are telling you this have been perfect we are telling you from an angle of experience because they say experience is the best teacher we served the enemy and god brought us out of there and we are telling you what we went through while we were in the world the enemy was stealing our energies the enemy was using us to also steal other people's energies and supply it to his kingdom to steal souls and that's why you see whenever they are performing they have to be sexy when you see beyonce she's a married woman no man in his right mind will allow the wife to dress the way Beyoncé dresses but because they are on a mission they sold their souls to the devil and they are working for the enemy the man will even allow her to remove her panty in the crowd and throw it to the people because they are on a mission and that is what is giving them whatever they have the energy and the influence that they have is stolen from you the fans and it is not good for you to put your trust in man as you're seeking for for happiness from man that is what you get that's why the bible says uh, cast is a man who puts his trust in a fellow man our trust and joy and everything should come from god whatever you want to have in life it should come from god but when you want it to come from man it is temporal look at samson in the bible Samson slept with Delilah and that was the beginning of his downfall. Many men, great men have fallen because of that area. And that area is so powerful and in many churches they don't talk about it. The youth are in choir but they are sleeping around. You find the choir members having sugar daddies. And this topic is avoided. This is the very center topic that we should discuss about because this is where life starts from. Now we had a, a, a there's another politician who used to send us to to influence girls in university those girls in universities are very hungry for money because of their background now when you when we would present these rich guys 
the idea of a rich guy. They are so excited because they know they are going to be able to shop, do their hair, have some makeup, have a smartphone. It's not even many things that they need because universities is a breeding ground. It's the place where the enemy is harvesting souls. Right. And you'll find many sugar daddies packed there. Parents, as you send them to hostel, just endeavor to know that there are sugar daddies that the enemy has planted there. You find a man, he's 90, he's 80, he has packed his, uh, his SUV, he has packed his uh, Mercedes Benz, and he's sleeping with these girls three at a go. Why? He has a wife, he has girls that he protects, but his wealth is taken from these, your children that you're sending to universities. So I suggest that as you teach them uh, about the knowledge of the physical things, you should also teach them about, in fact, the best person they should learn about sex from is the parent. Tell them about the dangers and the consequences of sleeping with somebody who is not their husband. Because if you don't, they are going to learn it the wrong way. So that this man would send for these young girls and then he would sleep with them and he had businesses, he had radio stations, he had, he had so much going on. Uh, and when they sleep with these little girls, it gets to a point where they are, because of their covenant with the enemy, they get so tired of even protecting themselves and they get infected. And when they get infected now, they, they, they don't see any reason of, protecting the other people because now they are, they are in pain and they don't want to go through that pain alone. So now they start infecting these young girls. And then the, the men who think that these young girls are innocent because they, 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 they think that they are not so exposed. When they go there, they, these young girls are infected and then they infect them. The ones they think that they are young. I, I met a pastor's daughter who told me that she had aborted eight times and she was 22 I felt so bad, you know, because the pastor doesn't know and she pleaded with me, don't tell my dad. And I'm not going to even mention the dad. The pastor is busy serving God, but the enemy has stolen his daughter, the only daughter that he has. So this thing is happening. It's happening in church. People are sleeping. Agents of darkness are in church. You find the choir master is a devil's agent and he's sleeping with all the choir members. And they are, they are singing under the influence of evil spirits. It's just lust that is at work. And as we are looking at these beautiful voices and we think that the, the spirit of God is at work, yet the enemy is at work. So when we share this information, we share it to help you. Today, while you see this so much confusion about uh, sex, people not knowing who they are, he doesn't know whether he's a man or a woman. She doesn't know whether she's a woman. She's now confusing herself. She, today she's saying, I am, a woman, I am a man. Then tomorrow she's saying, I'm a dog. Then the other day she's saying, it's because of uh, so many things that the enemy has cooked. Uh, this planned uh, parenting that is promoting abortions, is promoting infertility. Let me tell you, these family planning methods are one of the biggest reasons as to why there is barrenness. Many women who are on family planning, when they want to have children again, it becomes difficult because those drugs have a way of affecting their cycle. And then they want to have babies and they cannot have them again. And in universities, children are more scared of pregnancy than HIV. Can I tell you, they take those injections to stop them from having pregnancy because they don't want to disappoint their parents. They think that their parents will be more concerned about them dropping out of school because of pregnancy than them getting infected. So you find a young girl getting this injection that will stay in their system for 10 years or also damage them uh, entirely and they cannot have a chance of having children again. And they take that injection and then there's no guarantee that you will have a child again. And if you, in the case that you don't have a child again, there's no guarantee that the doctor will be answerable. There's nothing like that. You just go and tell the doctor what you want and the doctor will give you what you want, but the consequences will be on you, the one that is making the wrong choices. So these girls go for those injections and when they are injected, they get uh, through university, let's say four years, five years, three years. Now, that's the time when they meet their husbands. And now in marriage, there's no child. And they are fearing to tell their husbands what happened. 
the truth that I lived a, a bad life and now I'm, I'm paying for for what I did to myself. They cannot say that. So they start, oh, I was bewitched. Oh, let me do this. They start, they start fidgeting, but they have, the enemy has deceived them and placed them there. So uh, that's why you see there are many women stealing people's children in hospitals, uh, faking pregnancies. So much is happening, but all this comes from the enemy. He's the one who cooks it, but the way he he, he pictures it for us or he paints it is planned parenting and then they are on pills they are on contraceptives they're advocating that they start distributing condoms and those contraceptives to students in schools these students these uh, students are so young their brains have not yet uh, grown to a point of, of of holding the consequences that come with all those activities, especially sex. So when they start having sex at a tender age and they get pregnant, they, they cannot make the right choices. They end up going to abort. Uh, then we, we, when I was in school, there were some doctors who would come from family planning and, and uh, uh, others come like they're fighting uh, against HIV and they come to speak to the youth. The initiative to stop HIV, promoting HIV, stroke AIDS. And the advice they would give us, one, abstain. Two, be faithful. Uh, three, uh, they, they tell you if you cannot be faithful, you can masturbate. Because if you masturbate, you're not going to get, uh, you're not going to get HIV. You're not going to get pregnant. You're going to concentrate. But that is a lie from hell. There's a girl I know in our school who was masturbating using using this Bunsen, you know, those two small tubes that they use in the chemistry lab. The girl yeah. was masturbating using that. They use all sorts of things, you know, because of the deception of the enemy. And science is one of the ways they have come in to deceive the world. So there's this girl that uh, was masturbating using that uh, from the chemistry lab and it broke. And when it broke, it started uh, cutting her, ut her ovaries and she was rushed to hospital and they removed her uterus. And this girl is a very beautiful girl. Now she's a woman. We are all women. I know she also wants to have a baby like me. But because of what those doctors said, you can masturbate. She went for that option and the enemy destroyed her. So now there are many people who are damaging themselves. That's how uh, many girls are recruited into becoming lesbians in schools. These, these doctors are going to schools and bringing these ideas to these girls and the girls are admired. There are girls there who want to become doctors. So whatever the doctor is saying, they will take it to be 100% true. And remember, I've been explaining to you that there are some wizards. Wizards are the people that the enemy, uh, who the enemy uses their intellectual knowledge that they have and their positions to influence people at that level of, of understanding the people who are trying to get a degree, a master's and a PhD. So when they see a professor bringing that kind of idea to them, a doctor, these girls, because they're aspiring to be that, they will take that as a solution or as, if, you know, like when you're looking up to somebody and they bring a, something on table, you take that to be the truth. And the parents are very busy looking for money. They have no time to speak to their children. So these children are now practicing what they are being taught at school. That's how they become les lesbians. They start now sleeping with each other but masturbating. And by the time they are now lawyers, they are the ones who are now supporting the LGBTQ idea. They are judges now. It starts from school. That's why you have to find out what they are teaching your children in schools and also the, the content that your children are watching because it's through the cartoons that they are bringing pornography. They are also, there's also pornography for children and they are programming them. I went and visited one of my aunties when I was young and I watched a cartoon and this cartoon was lasting for, for a female, it was a male cartoon lasting for a female cartoon. And that image took a long time to get out of my mind. I was young with my little brother. We still remembered that cartoon. So uh, 
these things are so, 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 life is spiritual. It's not as physical as you think. It's going to have an impact on your children's lives. If you, if, if you just allow the enemy to have access to them, it will, it will program them to be the kind of people that you never wanted them to be. That's why today everybody's going for plastic surgery. They're expanding the bums, they're expanding the hips, they're expanding the, waist, the, 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 the breasts so that they can be sexy like some celebrities like Nicki Minaj so that they can, they, they, they promoted it. Why? Because they want sexual perversion. That's how the kingdom of, of darkness is feeding from humanity. And I don't want to be the only one to talk. I'll allow my dad to talk since we, I'm always here I'll, uh, to share what I went through. Amen. Thank you very much. Weiso Emmanuel are my names. Yes. I'm pastoring a church uh, in Jinja, uh, part of the, uh, some of, it's one of the cities in Uganda. And uh, I'm so privileged to be here on this show. I am so blessed that he, my son-in-law has invited Amen. me and Amen. my daughter. Thank you for the great Just work. Just add you your doing. firstborn. Yeah. My firstborn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she loved me yeah. calling her my firstborn. Yeah. You're That's welcome. why she says so. And uh, I'm also grateful to have met another firstborn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they teamed up to, to make a wonderful couple. So yeah. thank you very much for listening to this. It's very important that we know these things because it can be too late for any of us if we don't give attention to the word of God and if we don't really come into desiring to learn from God. Uh, our lives were wasted at one point or the other. I remember from my experience, I, my life was not really that good because I was born in a family, a polygamous family, uh, with so many children and of course those children come from different mothers right. and so there was a lot of hate speech there was a lot of uh, battles uh, struggles children were going through a lot that even their parents could not understand and uh, even the battles between wives was so great and intense it all affected us as we were growing up Right. And, t and uh, one fateful day came when my dad passed on and we were very little children. But we were left stranded. We were left desperate, agonizing. We wish we had had our dad for a long time. So that wound in us became deeper and deeper. We struggled with the life and no one knew what was going on in our lives. I guess there are so many of you are all over the world struggling because of what you've gone through. It wasn't your own making. Yes. You didn't like it, but it so happened to you and you find yourself in such a position. But I want to say one thing, that there is hope when you turn to God. Because... All this that my daughter has been sharing is happening because people have been left by themselves. No one, no adult in their lives. No one to channel them to know that there is hope, there is a solution. They just figure out. Many youth are trying to learn and cope up with the life by themselves. No one tells them that this is wrong. When you do this, you end up this way. So because everyone is meant to grow and you come at a time when you make choices and it is at that time when you were youth that you make most of the choices that govern your life because life is made up of choices that we make. Right. And if it is a wrong choice, then the consequences are terrible. And the devil has designed the life around us such that it becomes a trap and of course that trap traps you into destroying your life that you will never again live to enjoy it he wants us to live in regrets and regrets is one of the worst things anyone ought to to have in life because regret means what you've lost you will never have it back again and the 
I am here to now emphasize and let you know that a lot is happening, but what is happening around your life and many others may not be so good, but you can find hope in God. You can give your life to God right. because these people that come b b before you and tell you this and that and give you nice you know, promises, telling you if, if you accept me, if you accept this relationship, you are not going to regret. I will do this for you. Those offers have always been there for generations. Even when you go to, into you know, the past, the devil offered a lot to Adam. He offered a lot to Eve, which was falsehood. What ended out of that was, of course, what we are reaping now. So offers that come with the strings attached right. are not good offers for you. The, the many have fallen into the trap of sex perversion just because they were looking for something good. And maybe even the children have never been told by their parents that you are so precious, you are loved. They have never had, you know, that trusted adult in their lives to channel them, to guide them, to speak into their lives, to show them how they ought to live a good life, a decent life. Live alone being a Christian, but they are morals that everyone should have. Because there are even societies that have good upright morals and yet they are not Christians. But because of what they have gone through, the parenting they have received has modeled them into what they are. They have excellent life. I one time went to Europe. I would see that, you know, they are more trustable than we here. In Africa. We, we have a corrupted kind of lifestyle. Uh, not because we like it, but maybe because of what we are, the what we are going through and the system. For them, they can have shops and label their items that this one is sold at this price. So when you enter to that uh, shop or supermarket, uh, you will understand the price. But here, the price is labeled according to bargaining to, 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 to someone power. you see who is <laughs> coming to buy <laughs> that bargaining and there is a lot of evil behind that yeah. even a sexual life is also treated in the same way people are selling themselves yeah, you, you tell a girl that you love her and mm. then she says to my fair mm. send fair in Kenya is a very common word. yeah send fair and then I come send, send transport, transport yeah. And I come. yeah they don't mind what the outcome will be but all they have in their mind, I'm going to get something extra for my life or I'm going to enjoy. But they have put their lives at stake because the Lord has not made us to live that way. Exactly. He wants us to live a, 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 an upright life. And I, from the Bible view, I remember a man who I treasure so much. This is a man that the Lord recommended. He said, I have a great man, a man who trusts me and honors me. He lives according to my standards. And this was Job. But one of the things Job said as he was going through that difficult life, he did not compromise his life. He did not compromise his family. In fact, he always prayed for his children. That's what parents ought to do. Parents ought to pray for their children. Parents ought to help their children understand what is around them, to talk to them. You cannot have enough information, but when you prove yourself to the child that I, I want to tell you and I want to show you the direction, God will somehow bring in other people who will compliment on what you have for them. Yeah. And that's why we take them to schools. Because we cannot train them to be doctors, but we can help them to know that there is good life when you study. There is good life when you live a moral and upright life. So this is what Job does. He makes a covenant with God. He say, in one of the chapters, I think chapter 31, verse 1, he says, I made a covenant with my God that I will never look lustfully at a woman. 
because Job knew the virtues and the value of his life. No wonder he was rich. He was rich and his wealth did not come from perversion. He did not get the wealth from evil ways. Yes. He got his wealth by trusting God, by leaning on God, and God blessed his life. In fact, at one point, he would make even prayers, consistent prayers. He was persistent at doing it, praying for his children. Whenever they went to party, he would come back home and start praying to God, Lord, help my children, forgive them. They may have sinned somewhere while they are excited doing this and that, but I know that you were forgiving Father. Direct their lives. Job knew how to control his family, how to model his family, and how to help them grow. And this is what we missed. I missed that while I was growing up. I came to a time when I was about to get married, but I didn't know how a man treats his wife because that was out of my picture. I guess there are lots of people in this world who even think marriage is not a, something for anyone. They say marriage is not an achievement. It's not an achievement. <laughs> Many, in fact, say that when you marry, you are causing, bringing problems to yourself. And many depending men, on, younger men... Depending uh, on what they have been through. Yeah, depending on what they've been through. And they even see marriage as a burden. Others yeah. say men are not to be trusted. A lot yeah. of people, in fact, in the States, a lot of people don't want to get married because they see what happens during a divorce, during the process mm. of, of a man paying alimony and things like that. The, the law tends to side with the female. The female. And so the and man... take away all your wealth. Yeah, and so the man is... You met exactly. The so he's thinking, well, why should I get married? Maybe I should I should just have a concubine who I pay or just just some girl that I pay on the side mm. and you know take care of the business like that and not have to worry about being in covenant with anybody. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So it is really happening that way, not because this younger generation loves it that way, but because the enemy has conspired to destroy the whole entire race. Is is destroying generations. He knows when there is parenting. He knows when people open up their eyes to understand how they ought to live a moral and upright life before their children and be able to guide them, then he will lose. So his theory is to make sure that he takes so many to hell with him. He diverts so many and he makes them to live, a, you know, I don't know what to say, a corrupt life. A life that is filthy. No one wishes to have a wife who has gone through all that. A wife who sells herself on the street. And yet, the, the same men who say I don't want such a wife, they are also living a terrible life. And I guess the wives, all, those women, younger women, they say I don't want such a man. And where are the standards? The standards have been corrupted. And we would have come back to the foundation. Yes. And the foundation is the word of God. And the family set the up. The family set up that God has put there. Yeah. Right. Mm. Because uh, if you have grown up with a father and a mother, you also want to, you want your children to also have the same experience. True. But if you've grown up with your mother single-handedly, you will not see the need to, to sometimes, mm. if 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 uh, God has not helped, you will not see the need of a man in your life. Mm. Or in the child's life. Yes. So parenting is very important. Yeah. And that parenting will only happen if we put our lives to the word of God. Amen. And then we read the word of God. We study what does God say. I believe Job knew the word of God. He knew that by living by the, the, the standard of the word of God, I will be able to lift my family up. And God in that process prospered him. He yeah. made him to live a successful life. You said if, you married, but you, you didn't know how to treat a wife. I married, I didn't know how to treat a wife. And uh, when I was about to get married, I prayed to God because then I had known Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I said, Lord, help me, teach me how to be a man 
That was my worry, the greatest fear I had. Not how to get money, because I knew I would hustle and tussle and get money and get a living. But my worry was, how can I be a parent? How can I be a man in someone's life? I didn't, know, I didn't even know how to treat a wife because I never had to see my father treating my mother the way I would have learned it. Right. I wanted a model in my life. And many people are living that kind of lifestyle. Some children that we have are even on the streets. They go to, um, to street life at a younger age. And that's why we are seeing a lot of this happening. Some of them did not want to become harlots, but they find themselves forced into that because they have to earn a living, they have to, to have someone to love them, they, have, they, they are looking for sympathy in Something life. That is missing. So any consolation will mean, you know, selling themselves out because those people are forever again. They say, yes, I'm here for you, but I can only be near you to offer you what you need in exchange for sex. And so many have realized that their lives are wasted and they can't bring them back to what they could have been. They regret having gone into that life, but yet cannot have a better life at all. Because once wasted, you are all wasted. As one man put it, that it will, even in evangelism, when we, you reach out to the adults, you are repairing a life. But when you reach out to a child, you are building a life because that child is, is having knowledge that is being instilled in that child that will channel the child to know the right way to go. That's why the Bible says when you train up a child in the right morals, in the right way, that child will never depart from that way. Right. So what is the world in need of? What are we in need of? We need the standard of God, God is word. That's why when David realized he had fallen, he knew the only way to come, to, to have a better life, to, to come out of his mistake was to run to God. He learned to repent. He learned to come to God. He said, teach me your word that I may not sin against you. I need to keep your word in my heart that I will learn to live by your standards. The world today needs Jesus. The world today needs someone who can help them have what they are intended to be. We are not sexual puppets. We are meant to be people with a, a life to live for God, to live and please God and glorify God. Our bodies are not sexual orgies. Our bodies are meant to glorify God. In fact, we are temples of God, but the enemy has put a cover to that. He does not want us to know that God has given us life to live for him, to glorify him while we are alive. Amen. Yeah. So uh, the Bible speaks plainly that he who sleeps out with a woman or a man that are not their, their wives or husbands, those people are making a terrible mistake, a terrible sin. Because they are giving over the bodies which are meant to be temples of God to, to other people. And the act of sleeping with someone makes you one. You are aligned to that person. You are joined to that person physically, spiritually, and your soul is also taken. That's why you see there is a lot of mess in many people's lives. They are messed up. They, they, they are bound, they act the way they act because they have lost their lives. They have slept with so many men or women and they have ended up destroying their, their lives. And so they are trapped. Now, if you are sleeping with someone and you've become one with that person and you sleep with another one, what kind of standard life would you have? It's like 
you you've partitioned yourself to many people mm. today you're sleeping with this prostitute more another prostitute another and another uh, a school girl your your part of your life has been given to different people so you're not yourself again and it's more dangerous with females because mm. the female is on the receiving end and yeah right and when sperm enters what happens is that some of it f- flows back out mm. but the rest is absorbed into the woman's into body the, mm. into the woman's bones mm. and what happens is that it begins to travel through the blood to through the bloodstream mm. and it gives the woman instructions on how to care for her man mm. when the bible says the two become one flesh it they really become one flesh yeah. so now if a woman has received different seed from different men mm. it means that she has different instructions on how to deal on a dna level with these different men she's going schizo mm. and it's only the 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 repentance and the blood of jesus that can cleanse that schizo psycho mm. uh um mixture the defilement thereof can only be cleansed by the blood Amen. the blood the blood the blood of jesus yes it explains what you're saying explains why a woman can be married and then have a child for another man and she she doesn't want to give the child to the other man she decides to give it to the the man that she's married to because it comes from confusion you know you're married you have opened up your life to another person and now there's a, a result for that and now you have to cover it up because you don't want to let go of this one also and when you do that you open up your life you know to the enemy mm-hmm. and then uh there is now confusion there is betrayal there is there are so many women who have been killed by men for for those kind of things because we are not wired to be that way I, I, maybe a man can can try but a woman you're not wired to 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 this one is calling the other one is texting the, the other one is sending a gift you'll be so confused in fact it's very easy to get caught as a woman if you if you're having many men in your life it's very but there are some who have gone so deep that they are professionals they can't be caught they, mm-hmm. they have gone so deep they they have compromised and they have gone to a point that they don't have emotions anymore they they're heartless it's money give me what i want i give you what you are so they have sold themselves to the enemy for material gain and uh, it expl- what he was also saying it makes me understand why joseph could not sleep with potiphar's wife it comes from the way jacob had trained him jacob had mentored him and told him that you're different and given him even a coat of many colors separated him and taught him the ways of his god so even when he found himself in egypt and he found this woman trying to steal his destiny his vacuum he could not allow it and the bible says he was a nice looking man Oh, we need to pray for our boys. He was a nice looking man and this old woman saw Joseph's star and she wanted to steal the boy's star. He was a shining man. Even in 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 slavery, he was promoted. Everywhere Joseph went, he was favored. So when a woman is advancing uh, or seducing you just know that there is something about your life that cannot make this woman exactly. settle. Exactly. That, you're that's you're, you're not that good looking. Yes. Yeah. The, the the case is that she sees something in you and she want and that lust wants it for yes. itself yes that spirit wants it yes and and remember that joseph was a slave at the time that so what if so so, so what if what if he would have just said to himself well i'm a slave i have nothing to lose i might as well get with part of his wife and try to move up that way try to yes. move up in life you see ah. see that's how the bible says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not, not on your understand. own understanding right. so joseph's father had taught him the difference between trusting in god, in god. and leaning on your own understand. understanding and so that spirit entered into potiphar's wife hmm. to test joseph's convictions to see whether he had the character to keep what god had placed inside him and if if he would have failed that test he mm. would never have become the prime minister and what you would have found happening is that Potiphar's wife and oh, Potiphar, Potiphar would have yeah. raised up would have risen up to become the prime ministers yes. instead of Joseph oh mm. how many girls have slept with men for jobs and how many students have slept with lecturers for mm. marks and meanwhile they, and they are quiet they are silent and they don't know that what they traded for a few crumbs 
was priceless. Oh, that's the Bible oh says, My God, we have been bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We belong to God, we are His, we are the temple of the living God. So, our bodies should not be sold for peanuts when there is a master who controls our lives. And when we learn to experience the love of God and we come to God and we, we meet face to face with God through salvation, then we realize that we do not own ourselves, we do not belong to ourselves, we belong to God. We discover who we are in Christ Jesus. That one made the difference in my life. I was living a miserable life, a wasted life, struggling in all ways and then all these issues of witchcraft you know i i, I regretted having done be, born, being born in a, a family that is that wicked erica told us about I the time know. that mm, the spell what is that what's that spell that she put on him she, and what was she, the effect she gave she gave my dad some clothes that uh, that were like covenanted and then the moment he put on those clothes you know, my dad, I've learned about uh, family through my dad and mom. My dad loved my mom and he still loves her and I he has know. always protected us as a family. But once he put on those clothes that we are coming from a bad altar and we didn't know about spiritual warfare, like many church going Christians, mm. you just go to church, listen to a sermon and come back. And you know, look I call them have a nice day. Yes. You're going to have a nice day. Yes. Have a nice day. Yes. Glory to God. Yeah. Have a nice day. That kind of sermon, you're going to, mm. the devil's going to run circles around your life yes yeah, so when she gave because she had tried many ways to separate them my mom and, and dad uh, i don't know why she hated my mom but partly is because my mom was a prayerful lady and then uh, my mom was also supporting my dad to not to accept uh, my grandmother's witchcraft so all this would affect her now when she gifted him with a trouser and a shirt we got to learn to, to learn about it when they were doing deliverance mm -hmm. when we were going through deliverance so when she gave my dad that uh, trouser and a shirt it's like something came upon my dad and he started now being unfaithful now in that process the enemy hit hard our finances. In fact, he can explain. The enemy, he had everything he was trying to do. There's even a time he went to the island and he almost drowned. He was he, he was going to get Timber. timber. Uh, and even the machine <laughs> that he got was also taken. I, I explained it in one of the documentaries. And even when he went to cut uh, the timber that was at our at, uh, in our land, the, the 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 tree that was in our land, where my grandfather showed up as a leopard, and my uncle saw saw him. Uh, yeah. So it's like even after there, he went to cut more timber, and then they confiscated the machine. It's like the way you were explaining that when you decided to give your life to Jesus, even your ATM card was swallowed. Every, <laughs> every, it was like programming. <laughs> yes. yeah. It was but one misfortune after, after the yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. But, nonstop. Mm. But his was when, when they eventually got him to sleep outside marriage, like many men. When, when a man sleeps outside marriage, the enemy starts stealing everything that they have worked for with the wife. Because what happens when you're married, in fact, I advise women, when you're, when you're having intimacy with your husband, start in your spirit declaring what you want to see happening to him. You start praying for your man, you know, you, because you have to be a, 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 a help made to him. God created us. He designed us to submit to our husbands and to help them. So you pray inside you because what happens with the with the prostitutes they also start declaring making declarations inside them that they detooth your man that he gets so crazy and he gives them even what he never planned to give. That's why you see men who cheat outside he can give a slave queen a car 
ex- rent an expensive apartment while the wife at home is eating beans and 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 uh, no, I'm not saying beans are bad but you <laughs> you're eating the bad food Burritos? yet a a a slay queen is there enjoying your sweat exactly. so when you pray for your man and he he starts to realize from the time i married this woman my life is improving it's going up and up and up he will not even want to lose you even if the enemy deceives him at any point and then he slips out he will try as much as possible to hide it to protect himself so that he doesn't hurt his family he will regret because he will start seeing the difference he slips out he makes losses he sleeps with the wife he's successful his deals are going through when he goes out things are going bad for him so it it is it is spiritual sex is not something for pleasure as the world has painted it they make a man to see no meaning of a, a woman in their lives because if if a, a hip hop artist is demeaning a woman then it means this woman here is is the youth that are following the celebrities will see no importance of them in their lives and they will see somebody they can just use and after they have used they dump they they sing songs like uh, heartbreaking songs and songs of that but the in the god's initial plan for family is to is to bless us when a man and a woman come together they are fruitful they multiply they replenish they subdue and they have dominion that's why the bible says he that finds a wife finds a, a good thing, thing and, and obtains favor. favor your yeah. husband has to be favored from the time he finds you and all that doesn't just come from you just uh, putting on makeup and beautifying yourself and no there's something that has to be added to that women we are we are intercessors we are supposed to intercede for our men we are supposed to pray for them we are supposed to help them don't be spe- he he went out he made a loss and he said i knew it you're good for nothing i knew you were going to make a loss there you're making declarations that the enemy is going to hold on to and then when he puts your man down you also go down with him you have to be an uplifting wife a wife that honors the husband regardless of the storms and the circumstances of the of the world you speak words of encouragement i know you can make it i know the enemy is defeated i know he's trying to fight but he doesn't know that he's fighting a king i know you are a winner you can come through this you you know you 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 uplift your husband you don't demean hey <laughs> <laughs> hey wow. you can conquer the world <laughs> yes together with your man you can conquer the world you can make things happen even if you found him with nothing you can make him you can make him a king you can find your man as a servant and a woman you have the possibility of making your man become a king amen amen, amen. Yeah, it is very true. I remember the time we went through with my wife, but largely it is because of witchcraft that he, my life was upset. For me I knew God did not love me. I knew I had been attacked and I knew something had gone wrong in my life. I little did I know it was the effect of witchcraft. that had antagonized our family and all that they did to us we later on like my daughter said realized uh, that you know we had been attacked but that is during the process of deliverance and uh, there was a time in life i hated myself and i hated god i said if it is true you are god you are in my life and i don't see any change it is coming from bad to worse this is happening to me why should i live like a, you know i am pretending i have everything going the right direction and i am having a good god i i was very open to god i said i don't think i have received your love i don't think everything is going on according to what i felt you know when i come to god this is what happens this is how my life goes on i didn't know there were challenges in life and again when we are preparing our children when we are preparing even as fair christians maybe even adults we should be able to know that in christianity it's not all roses there are challenges in life so i didn't know how to 
to attack the challenges that came into my life. So when it became so hard for me, I had to kind of calm down. I was demoralized. And the effect of it was that I found myself hating God the more and going away from God. And uh, I loved my wife, but because I knew God would, did not love me, that alone made me feel so bad. So I thought I was punishing God. I said, if this is what, it hap what, what happens and uh, you, you do not love me, then I would rather go out of my way do something else maybe find another woman but that was not the solution when i made that mistake i discovered there was something that had come out of me wow something that i missed in life with which i had before because we were poor we were having challenges but, we but were a happy i was a happy family with my wife and the, well i came to her she learned of it because I shared with her, she forgave me and I went through that process. But healing does not come instantly. It is at that very time again that many things were happening. The witchcraft was intensifying until we were able to be helped out of it. When we had many other people come in to pray with us and the intercessors come in our lives to pray with us. And that was the time of my daughter's deliverance. And those times opened my eyes to see that families need protection. Children need to be protected. But I am very grateful that we tried all we could with our, you know, with helping our children to grow in the ways of God. Because had we neglected our children, maybe my daughter could have been totally really lost. lost. Yeah. Yeah, but it helped us again come back to know God more, to understand where the problems were coming from, and we dealt with the problem, problem squarely. So and it's important for it's couples to fight to together. To fight together. Mm -hmm. We fought together. And God has blessed us, has now brought, restored our relationship, restored our family. And we are serving the Lord. We are in ministry. But children need to be helped. So is divorce, according to what you went through, there are many people that are being misled. You find your husband has made a mistake, one mistake. And the first thing you think about, I, ha I need a divorce. Divorce is not a solution. Because unless it's involved. Unless, life. yeah. And unless it is something that is really, I believe God can give the grace to forgive. That is what Jesus says. That if someone so has offended you, go and put right with that person. Because there is power in forgiveness. There is power in understanding the love of God. I imagine if we had separated because of that experience, how bad would we be feeling? Mm. Our family would be torn apart and the, we would Even be having a waste of all. The children would be living a terrible life. So God helped me to understand that protection to my family is right. And that's exactly what the enemy did because he was fighting our family. He knew how much we loved one another. He knew how much we were there for, for one another and he wanted to break us. Thank God. He restored us and we discovered the secret of coming back again and living a good life and an upright life. So many people are suffering because they don't open up. They don't even want to know that they are going through a lot of problems in their lives. It's because of the training. They train men to be like, they, they make men feel like they should not cry. They should not be emotional. They should not open up. A man has to be a man. When you cry, you're showing your weakness. But let me tell you, it's better to open up and get help than to try to pretend that you are strong. Okay. Mm -hmm. As if everything is okay, yet it's not okay. Yet you're under attack. I mean, so this is a topic that's very close to my heart because I used to live in that same world as a slave, not understanding that first and foremost, that life is spiritual mm. and that 
the physical world that we live in is governed, is almost, is, is parented by the spirit realm. And that this is like a puppet world. And, the, and this world is just, the strings are being pulled from the spirit realm all around us every day. So, and I can tell you firsthand how destructive and evil sexual immorality is. Um, popular culture or pop culture it's it's like um, hip hop, rap, rock, R and B, reggae, dance hall, uh, trance, house, world music, you know, reggae, wh wh whatever music genre you listen to, um, they have a heavy presence in the world, and music affects our behavior. Even when I was in sin, there was always a soundtrack to my sin. <laughs> There was always a record I had going on in my head when I was busy doing something that was just far outside of God. You know, if I was drinking, there was a drink record that I was listening. That That's I was it. imagine <laughs> you're in club and then they're playing a a, a, a a secular song about love. And yeah. Then you put a gospel, and then you put a gospel song uh, in, in club. People will stone the DJ. <laughs> yeah. Like, no. Yeah. I mean, there's a soundtrack to your lifestyle. That's why it's so important with the music that you listen, listen to, to because, yeah. oh, and it doesn't matter how far back we go. My dad, the same thing. There was a soundtrack to his lifestyle before he got saved. There was always a soundtrack to the lifestyle. So the music you're listening to has a powerful effect. Now, I, I have some statistics here that talk about um, porn, sexual immorality and porn addiction. It's a big deal. It's a big deal this is huge and i want us to just kind of look at some statistics here that can help us get a grasp of just how big this is now uh, the, this the, these statistics are a few years old they might be 10 years old so you'll have to multiply them by probably five or ten because we're in 2023 now going on 2024 and um you know this was from a few years back but Porn statistics, pornography. Every second, 28,258 users are watching pornography on the internet. And that's just in the United States. Every second, $3,075.64 is being spent on pornography on the internet. That's $184,538.4 every minute. Every second, 372 people are typing the word adult into search engines. Over 40 million American people regularly visit porn sites. And we're just kind of, it's not like we're picking on America, but look, uh, to whom much is given, much is required. And look, we kind of run, the, I mean, the whole world wants to be like, like America, like us. So we got to, you come on, we have to take responsibility here. 35% of all internet downloads are related to pornography. 25% of all search engine queries are related to pornography or about 68 million search queries a day. 68 million search queries a day. One third of porn viewers are women. So that means the vast majority of those stuck in the world of porn are men. Um, search engines get about 116,000 queries every day related to child pornography. 116,000 queries per day. 35% of internet users have experienced unwanted exposure to pornography, pornographic content through ads, pop-up ads, and misdirected links or emails. I've been scrolling through Facebook before and just and a porn video just popped up. I was like, this is supposed to be Facebook. 2.5 billion emails sent or received every day contain porn. Every 39 minutes, a new pornographic video is being created in the United States. Every 39 minutes. So and It has come to a level that they force it upon us. Yes. Mm. You open up a phone. Yes. In other words, pornography is being produced on an industrial scale. And it is for a purpose. They're not just doing it for the money. It's, it's bigger than just the money. Yeah, it's triggering something. Yes. Who, who explained about the obelisk? Yes. If you look around, we showed you in symbolism, we showed you what the obelisk means. It is a giant male organ. 
as a so statue. Every city now. He has. We showed you the one in Washington, D.C. It's an organ inside of the vesica Pisces, which means the male inside the female. You're looking at a sex act right there. So subconsciously, as a monument. Subconsciously, they are programming you. Yes. Now, I found myself in the world of hip-hop and rap music, and it is important to know that every genre of music other than praise and worship unto God is a cult. Hip-hop is a cult. Reggae is a, is a cult. cult. Dance yeah. Hall. Dance hall is a cult. You better, you better learn. Look, trance, dance music, or trance music, it's a cult. Um, rock, rock and roll, especially, oh, rock and roll is a cult. It's not just music. It is a cult. If you love that genre of music, you be, you are actually in that cult. And it's not like you belong it, it there. It's slowly entering the churches. Exactly. Because even the dancers, we, we copy from the world. They twerk. Uh -huh. bring everything in the church. Yes, twerking yes. in the church. Yes, you heard C.D. Jake say that his wife said his wife twerks for the Lord. I said, what kind of nonsense? You see, this is the, the mixture of the holy and the profane. And I'm not here to, to, to just, you know, to attack any man of God. But uh, it, it's not right. To mix the holy and the profane is not right. Doesn't matter how famous or how big or how rich. Now, um, because some of the artists in that industry are not ministers, they are artists in the gospel industry. And, and they seek to make a name for themselves in the gospel world. So hip-hop is a cult rap is a cult reggae dance hall is another cult all these cults promote sexual immorality in their lyrics and music videos and satan is promoting the lifestyle of careless sin using the entertainment industry so the industry of entertainment is not just the industry of creating records and then releasing those records distributing marketing pressing cds or pressing vinyl um which is kind of old but now or releasing music on youtube but it is a cycle or releasing music and streaming music on Spotify and what have you. It's not just that. It does not end there. The entertainment industry is designed specifically, mainly to promote immorality, to promote all manner of sexual deviancy. Why? And deviation and, and, and homosexuality and, and fornication and adultery and masturbation. Why? Because of the energy that Satan can harvest from that kind of lifestyle when the public is engaged in that kind of lifestyle. It plays back in our minds as we, we remember. It's it's a memory. Yes, yeah, yes. Like a memory card. Yes, and one yeah, of the reason why back. one of the reason God wants us to be virgins when we get married is so that we can have pure memories. It's pure memories and clean memories, yeah. Yes. So uh in two thousand eight the company Hitwise cataloged forty thousand six hundred and thirty four websites that distributed pornography. And according to the research by two neuroscientists, Ogi Ogosa and Sai Gadam, in 2010, out of the 1 million most trafficked websites in the world, 42,337 are sex-related sites. Uh, 13 free websites comprise between 70 to 80 percent of the adult material online, typically used as bait. And four pay websites guiding viewers to premium pay services. Now, a conservative estimate places 32% of adult membership websites and 58% of free adult websites outside of the U.S. So 90% of free porn websites and nearly 100% of pay porn websites buy their material rather than creating it themselves. So there is an industry of people, of, of companies that buy porn from other porn producing uh, organizations or companies and then they sell it. And a lot of it is free. They give out a lot of it for free. So you can tell that it's not just about money. Um, in 2009, the Media Research Center, MRC, examined the most popular YouTube searches for the word porn, yielding 330,000 results. And the study reported on the top 157 videos, all with 1 million views or more. So um, there's some stats here that are just mind blowing. Two thirds of the videos advertise themselves as actually being pornography. 
Many videos feature clips from actual porn movies, interviews with porn stars, and advertisements for porn stars and phone sex lines and things like that. Um, another factor. Uh, profanity is commonplace in the titles and comments for the videos. Um, Webroot Cybersecurity says 28,258 users are watching pornography every second. We already mentioned that $3,000 is spent on porn per second on the internet. My parents should, parents should uh, be checking their children's gadgets. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes, you should. In fact, if you're a parent, your child has a gadget. I don't want my children my to children have gadgets have until gadgets. until they're 18, maybe. They can have the old 30, Nokia 3610, the one without screens and whatnot. Because mm -hmm. if I need to contact you, I'll do so. But you're not going to be watching um, videos unsupervised. We should always unsupervised. be open to them. Yeah. yeah. Tell them what happens exactly. Mm -hmm. Because shying away will not help our children. Or even keeping quiet, assuming that maybe they will learn. They are adults. They are going to grow. Do we don't have to wait for them to learn in their mistakes. Right. They have to be told. Why? And that's the role of a parent to tell them why they should not do it and the consequences, the dangers. We should not keep quiet because I would rather tell my child and be open to the child than simply keeping quiet and then my child dies. Right. And so it is very necessary that we open up, we share. We make an alarm. We tell our children what is happening around them. Yes. So that they can have a chance to choose between the parent's voice and what is coming their way. They can know, Daddy told me this. What I'm uh, watching is not right. And I know it is not right. And then maybe they can repent if they have been tempted to do that. Because they will have a conscience that reminds them that this is wrong. So let us share with the children. Yes, exactly. Tell them straight up. Mm. Don't water it down. And if there was immorality in you, tell them. Mm. Because they need to know what they're going to be dealing with in the bloodline. And yep. if you hide it from them and pretend that you're Holy Joe, you haven't always been holy. <laughs> None of and us were always holy. attention, especially yeah. in, in terms of prayer. That stuff you breaking repented of? Breaking the covenants, breaking those. those the, yes, the yeah. things you repented of, yeah. your children are going to have to deal with them. So that means if you train them early, they don't have to go through the mess like we did. Mm -hmm. So, 28.5 billion annual visits to the website, to these porn websites, 81 million daily average visits, 25 billion searches performed, 50,000 searches per minute, 800 searches a second, 4 million videos uploaded, 68 years worth of content uploaded. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to sound the alarm. Hmm. Humanity is under attack. attack. This is not some isolated, you know, thing that this is worse than the pandemic, hmm. the plandemic. This is worse. This is this is self-inflicted wounds. This is man committing suicide on an industrial scale. So this is huge. Um 3,732 pentabytes of information transferred, enough to fill the memory of every iPhone on Earth. You. That's a lot of filth. Hmm. That means that a river or seas of, of debauchery and immorality and ungodliness are flowing through the nations. Through the nations. And that's what God is seeing. God can see it. The filth and the stench thereof is filling the atmosphere from one side of the earth to the other. Mm. It's yeah, not just the words we speak. Yes, it explains why the family unit has been attacked so bad. Because now the man is watching pornography and the wife is masturbating. How wouldn't the enemy attack such a family? Yes. Yes. So... um. There are there are details about the performers of porn, um, the people that actually do it. They find themselves in that lifestyle. A lot of people will move to California hoping to become like an actor or, or make it big in Hollywood or make it big in the entertainment world and find themselves low on money. They don't know God. And when you don't know God, you're wide open. 
Mm. For any lifestyle that'll that that will pull you in, and then and you don't know God, that means you don't pro program your life with God's word. That means your life is programmed yeah. by spirits. Mm. And if you live in California, there's a certain kind of spirit that lives there, marine kingdom spirits mm. from the Pacific Ocean, pulling that will influence you. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And if they don't know about that, they're gonna be puppets for the devil. So uh, amateurs came across better. Uh, on screen, it's, I'm reading a post here. Our customers feel that, especially by women, you can see it. They feel strong pain. So the, they're they're saying that the, these when they're doing the actual pornography, a lot of them are in pain. A lot of them can't do it when they're sober. Um, yeah, once uh, the pornography actresses are in the industry, they have high rates of substance abuse, typically alcohol, cocaine. Uh, depression, borderline personality disorder. Um, the one says the experience I find most common among the performance performers is that they have to be drunk, high, or disassociated in order to go to work. Mm -hmm. Their work environment is particularly toxic. The terrible work life of the pornography performer is often followed by an equally terrible home life. They have an increased risk of sexually transmitted disease, including HIV. There's domestic violence and have about a 25% chance of making a marriage that lasts as long as three years. 25% chance. That's from Dr. Mary Ann Layden. Uh, and in 2000, 2008, Shelley Lubin, founder of the Pink Cross Foundation, reported only 17% of performers use condoms in heterosexual adult films. In 2004, only two of 200 adult film companies required the use of condoms. One male pornographic performer by the name of Rocco, who had performed in 600 films and slept with 3,000 women, said every professional in the porn world has herpes, male or female. He said everyone hmm. has herpes. Of course, when you live that lifestyle, the the hand of the Lord is removed from you. The spirit of God is not even looking at you. So you live in a world of darkness. You have and a the, seared conscience. And the devil is going to give you what he has because he's a cursed being. Mm. He cannot give you what he does not have. He's a pumping you up. Mm -hmm. It's tough. Dr. Sharon Mitchell confirms the STD prevalence in an interview with Court TV in which she stated 66% of porn performers have herpes. 12 to 28% have sexually transmitted diseases and 7% have HIV. Now, this is not to stigmatize anybody who's sick. Jesus can make you whole. The blood of Jesus is real. He can totally deliver you. He can make you a virgin again. Hmm. That might seem impossible to you, but you don't understand the power of the blood of Jesus. He can make you a virgin again, more than a virgin who's never slept with somebody, but they don't have Christ. That's how pure the yeah. blood can make you. Porn actress Erin Moore admitted that the drugs we binged on were ecstasy, cocaine, marijuana, Xanax, Valium, Vicodin, and alcohol. Tanya Burleson, formerly known as Jersey Jackson, says, Guys are punching you in the face. You get ripped. Your insides can come out of you. It's never ending. You're viewed as an object, not as a human with a spirit. People do drugs because they can't deal with the way they're being treated. A 2012 survey of 177 porn actresses demonstrated porn stars are more likely than the general public to, one, first have sex at an early age, average 15 years old. They have more lifetime sexual partners, average 74 partners on average. They're, and they're uh, more likely to be concerned about they're less likely to be concerned about catching an STD. About only 8% are concerned. They're not, you know, not, they, like they don't know what's out there. On average, um, about 79% have used marijuana, 39% have used hallucinogens, 50% have used ecstasy, 44% have used cocaine or, use, or, or are currently using, 27% uh, methamphetamine, 26% tranquilizers, 10% heroin. A 2010 study of 304 pornographic scenes discovered that 88.2% contained physical aggression, including spanking, gagging, and slapping. Ne nearly 
half, 48.7%, contained verbal aggression, mostly name calling. And the perpetrators were mostly male and the targets were mostly female. The targets were depicted responding either naturally or positively. So you see, um, it's a violent, evil world. It's a world of darkness. So, you know, the husbands who are watching that and expecting their wives to perform that way and, and it's not happening, we end up going out. And even out, when they go, a, a person in their right mind cannot perform like that person who has been dragged. So now it gets to a point of a person getting now uh, attracted or addicted to sex. And now they cannot control themselves anymore. He ends up sleeping with three women, four women. The thing begins to, to drive him crazy and while it's feeding on him. Yes. Wow. So... In the U.S., porn generates about $13 billion a year, $3 billion from the Internet alone. Internationally, the figure climbs from 13 to a staggering $97 billion. One in five smartphone searches are for porn. There are more than 75 million porn addicts worldwide. From 2001 to 2007, the Internet porn revenue in the U.S. went from $1 billion a year to $3 billion a year. Uh, between 2007 to 2011, both the U.S. and global revenue was reduced by 50% due to the amount of free porn available online. So that gives the reason why governments don't stop it. Mm -hmm. Because they are getting a lot of revenue from it. Because they get it. a lot of revenue from it, but it is killing their citizens. Mm. So you have to ask, does government really care about human human beings, about their citizens? Uh, free internet porn was basically born in 2006. So today in the U.S. alone, internet porn pulls in about $2.84 billion a year, whereas the worldwide industry is now worth $4.9 billion. But they give a lot. They started giving porn out for free. So you can tell it's not about money. It's not even about money for them. It's about what's happening when these people are watching porn, when the porn addict is watching porn and masturbating or watching porn and begins changing and trading partners in the usa the porn industry generates between 15 to 97 billion another statistic is saying so there's no real, real way of knowing ex exactly how much because obviously they want to hide the amount because they don't want to pay that much in taxes so you might want to double or triple it as of august 23rd 2023 the porn industry's annual revenue is $100 billion worldwide. And the porn industry's annual revenue in the U.S. is around $13 billion. That's, that's a conservative estimate. It's more. They don't want to pay tax. So it's definitely more. It probably double or triple it. More people view Internet pornography every month than Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined. In 2016, people watched 4.6 billion hours of pornography at just one of the more than 42 million pornographic websites. That's equivalent to 524,000 years spent watching porn in one year. We have a we, there's a different pandemic here that we need to deal with. Forget about COVID-19. PORN hmm. is the is the is the pandemic that we, the pandemic man created a pandemic it appears like it is the most vibrant site is it's a river of depravity flowing from america into the various nations and from also those nations into where other nations it's it is a river of ongoing depravity it's and it is and it births all kinds of abominations it's because oh. sex is where life begins for every human being it's where life begins and if the enemy can corrupt that it's if, even in family it's where everything begins you know when you uh, come together with your partner now that is called unity you become one and uh, to show that there is no unity between a couple is when one person will, will start now hiding things from you they don't feel comfortable anymore to speak to you about their challenges and their excitement that's when you know that the enemy has intruded your family if your husband is not even comfortable to tell you that oh we made progress or we made a loss then just know that the enemy is somewhere and he's he's there's somebody that he might be confining 
in. Why? Because we, the women, God created us to help our men. If you cannot help your man and he sees you as uh, an enemy, then there, that is a door that the enemy will use. Then he'll begin to have satisfaction elsewhere, to have other people to open up to elsewhere. Support your man in all, under all circumstances. That whether he has made losses, whether he has made profits, be that kind of woman that your husband can come to. If you don't, the enemy, the way you're seeing the websites, the enemy is not play. You find that prostitutes have information about people's husbands and the wives don't have any idea of what they are doing, what they are up to. Men are in clubs, they are in bars, they are drinking and talking to themselves because they don't have people to talk to. Let your man be comfortable to talk to you about anything and everything Amen. and be that kind of person that is welcoming. Yeah. So... Uh, you wanted to say something? I wanted to say something. That pornography in most situations is, is silent. It is op watched silently. They are, you, you've given us the statistics, but uh, I don't think man, many of those people come out to say that I watch pornography. It is something that they feed on silently. And it's a destroyer because you can't even fi figure out how to help them. It's on the phones. And they are watching it quietly. And so it helps them to feed on their egos, to feed on their satisfaction inside without sharing with someone that this is my problem or this is what I'm doing. And even wives or husbands don't know that their partners are watching pornography. In other words, the shame prevents people from coming out to admit what they're doing. Now, look at how early children are being exposed to pornography. 93% of boys and 63% of girls will be exposed to internet porn before the age of 18. 93% of boys and 63% of girls before 18. All right. The average age of first exposure is 11 years old. And some surveys say it's eight years old and it might be even earlier. In other words, if you're watching porn, you are actually not only destroying your own life, but you are contributing to the destruction of the lives of others. You are, contr you are contributing to this industry. You're supporting, the you're industry. supporting this pornography industry with your eyes, with your attention. So you are playing a role in the destruction of not just yourself, but the next generation. So... Um, look at how pornography has crept into our local churches. A recent survey found that 50% of Christian men and 20% of Christian women are addicted to porn. pornography. That means that in a church with 100 adults, 25 men and 10 women are struggling with porn. That's one in three. That's one in three. And in including church. ministers. In the church, yes. And those work concurrently together pornography and masturbation yes yes they work together and now that results to losses stealing of energies and, uh, and 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 breaking of families and losses because once you start masturbating i don't think you get satisfaction from your partner you can't no way you can't you can't and we're going to get to that but a significant relationship also exists among teens between frequent pornography use and feelings of loneliness, including major depression. So it produces something that is also demonic, and depression is one of them. Loneliness is one of them. Another point is that adolescents exposed to high levels of pornography have lower levels of sexual self-esteem. So their, their self-esteem is reduced by, by, by this... Um, by this debauchery, by this depravity, so it's 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 something that is um, ongoing on an industrial scale that we can see, and it is destroying and is attacking youth, and it is spreading, and it is an this is a, this is an emergency. In other words, we are sounding the alarm, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm upon the holy mountain of God, because as watchmen, it is our duty to do so. Very true. There is. A pandemic, a pandemic, a wave of iniquity and depravity, and the Antichrist needs this. This is an Antichrist industry. This is this industry is central 
to the activities of the Antichrist because he needs this energy to, he needs to draw from this energy in order to produce his new world order. Amen. So look, according to National Coalition for the Protection of Children and Families, in 2010, 47% of families in the United States reported that pornography is a problem in their home. Another point, pornography, uses increases, pornography use increases the marital infidelity rate by more than 300%. So if you're watching porn, it will increase your infidelity by 300% on average. Another point, 40% of porn addicts lose their spouses. 58% suffer considerable financial losses and about a third lose their jobs. Yeah. Meaning that you put in so much money into pornography, watching it, and then when it induces you into going out uh, uh, out of your family circle, that then that means more money given out. Yes, financial losses. And those are financial losses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 68% of divorce cases involve one party meeting a new paramour, that is a, a sexual partner, over the internet, while 56% involve one party having an obsessive interest in pornographic websites. Now, what is pornography? Pornography is, rep is a representation of sexual behavior in books, pictures, statues, motion pictures, and other media that is intended to cause sexual excitement. The word pornography is derived from the Greek word porni, which means prostitute, and graphene means to write, and was originally defined as any work or of art or literature depicting the life of prostitutes. So that was what pornography is. Pornography means the act of depicting the life of prostitutes. It feeds the mind. Yes, yes. So pornography is an audiovisual hard drug a type of cocaine that neutralizes and desensitizes the reward system in our brains. It reduces and gradually shuts down the frontal lobe activity, leading to less self-control, which then leads to addiction. It also lowers testosterone levels and increases emotional and sexual insecurity. So there is an effect that porn has upon the mind, yes, upon the brain, and it is classified like a class A drug, meaning it's just as bad as it's cocaine. cocaine. Mm -hmm. It's just as addictive as heroin. Just as and addictive as ecstasy. Yeah. yeah. Any class A drug, pornography is right up there with them. Um, in 1899, a man by the name of Eugene Pior Kaucher uh, was the first known softcore erotic film. Louis, Louis Willey, who started in eight burlesque comedies from 1896 to 1913, performed a striptease and bathed on camera. So that's it, 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 that, that wickedness began around 1899, and it was some Frenchman. So the question is, what is the purpose of pornography? When God created man, he did not use the same material as what he used to create the cherubim or the seraphim or the angels. When God created man, he breathed into man the breath of life. That is how man became a living soul. You know, like we mentioned earlier, there, there are angels that are made of fire. Um, seraphim are made of fire and can transform. Uh, cherubim are also made out of various, uh, some are made of light. Other are made of, of various um, things like electricity and things like that. But when God created man, it was different. God breathed into man of himself. And that's what makes man different, different from, from all of the uh, angels uh, and from all of the other creation. Yeah. God breathed into man a smaller version of himself. himself. And the Bible says in Genesis 2 verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So that, that word in Genesis 2, 7 is is uh is plural rather than singular he didn't breathe in, into man the breath of life he breathed he breathed into man the breath of lives in other words that word 
in the Hebrew is not life, it is lives. So when God was creating Adam, he breathed into him the, the breath of lives. Of, you know, it's funny, it's, it's, it's different in English. Yeah, because God would eventually bring Eve out from Adam. Well, we're about to see that. Out of Eve. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Eve a human out of being. Adam and then babies out of Eve. Yes. So a human being is a soul, which is a mind, will, and emotions. Your soul is the real you. The real being inside your body is a spirit being. The energy source of that spirit being is your spirit. All right. That's the energy source. It's like the battery, but it's in spiritual form. Man is a spiritual being called a living soul. Man has a body and both soul and body are energized or powered the by the spirit man. Yes. When man dies, it is the spirit which returns to God and the soul proceeds to either heaven or hell. In, e in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, the Bible speaks of the point of death where and he says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. That means that God is the source. He's the father of spirits. He's the source of all energy. So he put in you a battery pack. An energy. An energy pack or energy form, a life. And that life is your spi is, is the spirit that he has given you. Which and the, the enemy conspires to steal To from, steal. He wants to that. To drain. Because life that. is spiritual. Because life he, spiritual, and yeah. he needs that life form because God is not supplying the devil with energy. Why? How do we know that? Because Jesus said a kingdom divided against itself will fall. So where does Satan get his energy from? He needs to harvest it from somewhere. All right. So in Luke 16, verse 22 to 24, Jesus was telling the story about the soul of a man. And he says, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and sees Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. That means that that is proof right there that the soul at the point of death emerges from the body and either goes to heaven oh, or hell. Yeah. And the spirit returned unto God who gave it. And that means that if your battery pack went back to God, your soul has no strength of its own. By what energy will you function? So that means that any spirit, the spirit that you've been living for, the spirit that you have been serving during your lifetime will, be, will have access to that soul when it comes out of your body and he can toss it around as he wishes. He can, he can send it anywhere he wants. So we know that the soul will proceed to a destination after it departs from the body. So beware of people who will tell you that when you die, um, you, you, you're, you're dead until the resurrection. That's a lie. Jesus told the story about, he gave the parable about the person who died. In fact, it wasn't even a parable. It was a direct story. It was coming from his recollection that he, he remembered seeing the rich man in hell burning, asking for a drop of water to be placed on his tongue, as if a drop of water can help you in that torment. But he the, clearly the soul remembered. He can recognize faces. He can recognize names. He still re remembers. He has a memory. He remembers his own name. He even seemed to know Abraham, yet Abraham lived years before him. The so the intelligence, the yeah, yeah, so his intel the soul's yeah, intelligence yeah. is actually greater than what we experience in this, in this physical part. limited world. That's yeah. true. Yeah. And it's our real body this is the the housing to enable yes. us uh function on this planet yes and so you know you need energy in this world um and if you've never experienced coming out of your body then you won't know how much energy is required to even move a glass like this you see you, you take it for granted because physically you can move this glass but spiritually, if you were to come out of this body and try to move this glass, you, you can't will, do You'll be moving through move. the glass. Yeah, you'll move through the glass. So you don't have energy, and energy is what is required to function in this world. And that's why Satan, he is desperate for the energy, energy, and the energy has been entrusted to 
to man. God has given man energy to steward for a short period of time. But if man abuses that energy, then the enemy can steal it and do with it as he wishes. Satan needs energy to build his new world order. And guess where he's going to get that energy from? From man. from man. And that is the heartbreaking thing. So we know that the soul will proceed to a destination after it departs from the body. In order for a soul to function in this physical world, it needs two things. One, a body. Two, a spirit. Because spirit, also known as the heart, not the fleshly heart, but the heart of a man, which is his spirit man, supplies energy. And this energy is the divine energy of God, which he has given to man in order for man to live in the earth, which God created. So without energy, nothing can exist in the physical world. It is a law. Anything in this world that does not have energy must leave this realm. The realm is an energy field. For anything to survive here, it must have energy. God is the source of our energy, but God does not supply energy to the fallen angels who rebelled against God in heaven. And this is because of the obvious conflict of interest. In Psalm 78 verse 25, the Bible says, man did eat angels food. He sent them meat to the full. So we know that even angels need to eat. And if angels need to eat, they require sustenance. That means they have a source of energy also, and God is feeding them. But if the fallen angels need energy, they need to get it from somewhere else. They'll get it from disobedient men. Even angels require energy and are sustained just like man requires energy and eats so that his energy may remain consistent. If man runs out of energy or if his energy supply is cut off for any reason, man will die. We know God does not supply Satan with energy. Jesus said every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. That's Matthew 12, 25. So if God is not supplying his enemies with energy, they must tap into energy from somewhere. There's no greater source of divine energy other than human sacrifice than that which is released when man is engaged in sex because this is divine life giving energy. And that energy can be harnessed by malevolent interdimensional beings who need it, not just to survive, but to thrive and procreate and build their armies and subjugate man and kill and steal and destroy. Pornography is the industry which extracts divine sexual energy from humanity into the coffers of the kingdom of darkness on an industrial scale. That's, this, that's terrible. We're helping the enemy. God has entrusted man to steward this divine energy and only use it within the institution of marriage. But when it is misused by having sex or masturbating, it opens the doors for evil spirits to come in and draw from the divine energy that you are supplying through your disobedience and your lack of self-control. Uh, now I know why these people are fighting hard to promote pornography. Yes. Because it will induce the world into a desire to offer themselves into sex. And by doing so, the world will be stolen, the, the energy will be stolen from mankind. Yes. And the, even when you were giving the study, that, that uh, study case you gave about America and what is happening in America, we have the most recent one which we did on our children, children from our churches, because we had around 1,200 children come for a youth camp. And the, we were teaching them about pornography, you know, telling them the dangers and helping them to make a commitment to the Lord and to seek for God's divine intervention. And what we discovered is quite alarming. About 90% of those children, even young ones, are exposed to pornography. And it was so, so gripping in our souls. We felt so bad. And that's when we, dis we realized how worse it is even in the churches. Churches are meant to be places of security to the life of a child. But see what is happening in, in, in the inner circles of our churches. I was introduced to porn at, at my relative's place. That's why I 
advise parents not to be sending children to relatives. If they have to go, they have to go under your supervision. Don't be sending them for holidays. Go to your auntie, go to your uncle, go to your grandma because maybe you want to find time to work or time to be alone. Your children are your responsibility. That affected me because growing up from a Christian family with my brother, we would never watch uh, porn. Now I'm 11 and now my relative is introducing me to pornography and it really affected me. And that's the time when a girl can get pregnant. That's a time when, you know, that's a time when you're becoming an adolescent, you're becoming an adult, you're getting from uh, being young and the body hormones are now active. So it, it's very dangerous. I thank God he protected me. But how many children have been defiled, abused and exposed to such things? Yes. Yeah, so And it's more rampant in the urban environments because those are the children that are exposed to to technology and the, the gadgets are in their homes they have them in their schools so they are standing a risk of this dangerous uh this dangerous addict yes addiction, addiction yes mm. so every time you are engaged in a sexual encounter either alone or with someone who is not your spouse you're actually feeding evil spirits mm. energy harvesters that need that energy in order to do a long list of things, which we'll get into. But, um, and those are the very same spirits that actually tempted you, which is, which is evil because you thought you were just having your own independent thoughts, desiring pleasure. Meanwhile, there were spirits involved the whole time. They set up the meeting. They moved other engagements out of the way where your programming was concerned so that you could accommodate this sexual encounter so that they could harvest energies from you. So they're the ones who actually tempted you. And because pornography is an audiovisual hard drug that like cocaine, that one neutralizes and des desensitizes the reward system in our brains and also two reduces and gradually shuts down the frontal lobe activity leading to less self less self control which then leads to addiction and three lowers the testosterone and increases emotional and sexual insecurity the cycle of addiction leads to deeper levels of depravity, which provides more energy for more spirits to feed on. And the cycle continues until serious changes begin to become apparent in the brain. Erica told us about Cleo, a being with supernatural intelligence that was giving technology to human beings in exchange for covenant agreements. And part of those agreements are access to human beings. Now, why do these beings that look like this, that look like Cleo. Why do those beings want access to humanity? And they're hiding. A lot of them, and, you know, people have written about these deep underground military bases. And you can see that these beings, they live there. And they're trying to procreate. But they don't have the power to do so by themselves. They need the seed of man. So the intelligence communities in most countries are aware of most Western countries are aware of these beings and some have even interacted with them. Others are literally protecting them. Cleo had bodyguards who surrounded him everywhere he went. That's what Erica told us. He has bodyguards who protect him. So that means that there's the, the, the intelligence community is well aware of these things. So when a person and this is the this is the secret that they don't want people to know and this is what pastors teachers evangelists prophets apostles should be telling you when a person climaxes sexually his essence literally leaves his body mm. yeah sexual climax takes place in the spirit realm in the spiritual realm true. not just the physical when a person is climaxing part of what is happening is that their spirit and their the lover's spirit, spirit mm. are ascending and intertwining and mm. becoming one and that's like the, a worship and, and yes. that's when mm. you are supposed to make declarations upon mm. your partner mm. if he's poor you start declaring that he will be financially stable if he's uh, hot tempered you begin to declare that he he will be uh, gentle 
if you that's when you pray you know it's not that just a time for you to just uh, have fun and then forget mm. about it like you know like the you're people to, who are blind you're supposed to concentrate yeah yes. because your union mm. is a prayer and god is receiving it and if it is in the institution of marriage the godly institution of mm. marriage uh between a male and a female mm. um who are of age <laughs> Uh, we have to keep on adding those details because mm. crazy things are coming out yeah you know but uh, uh but old men are marrying babies yeah so when all of these uh, necessities are satisfied then it's a godly union and mm. during that and union then god blesses god blesses it mm. and that's why and i don't mean to be um lewd or anything like that and it's it's important that you decide whether you want your children to hear this or not there's some parents i want my children to hear it they they're, they're going to hear about these things from from us they're not going to hear about it from the internet all right so during that moment of climax sometimes a person will say that i'm i'm actually coming well what does that mean what do you mean that what are you talking about you're mm. you're already in that place what do yeah. you mean you're where, where are you where are you going where were you Where are you now? that now that's that you're right. that, yeah. that that now that you're arriving hmm. what is happening is that your spirit man it's is lifting. Is lifting, is lifting out of your body and meeting with and hmm. meeting with your spouse and the that's two a high level of intimacy one. very high level of intimacy yeah. which should be only taking place hmm. under the auspices of the institution the godly institution of Very marriage true. all right so if it doesn't happen like that and it happens through masturbation or it happens through fornication it's a different the whole the dynamics change but when it happens in marriage it is powerful it, it fulfills is extremely, god's plan it fulfills god's plan mm. and through that union through that energy right. that release of energy a husband and wife can take over the world yes why because that union when it comes when it comes together like that the energy that is released is released unto god but you know god whenever you give to god He's so good. He's a good father. He gives right back to, to you. you. Yeah. So that energy and then he doesn't just give it back to you the way you gave it to him. Pressed down, shaken together and running over. He gives it back and he sends it back into you and now the energy level that you're functioning at is uh, such a superior level that you begin to dominate in the and affairs in of the life. In the favor of God. Yes. Everything that you do is favored. Every business, every every plan, every idea, whatever you're doing is now favored by God. That's why he says he that finds a wife, mm, not he that finds thing. a husband. He that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains you obtain it. Yeah. You, it's yours and obtains favor mm. yes. from God. These are the powers that we're talking about when And the Bible says in Deuteronomy 8:18 I will remember the Lord my God for it is he that gives me power yeah, to make wealth to get wealth mm. that he why that he may establish his covenant mm. which he swear unto our uh, fathers Father as it is this day mm. so when this this delicate union is tampered with in any way there's space less left for abuse and when it is abused it can be devastating and most human beings are being devastated by the abuse of this institution. 1 Corinthians 6:16 the Bible says what? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body for two says he shall be one flesh. So do the two physical bodies actually become one? No. The body he is referring to here is the spiritual body. The two spirits combined it's like one drink pouring into the other drink can you ever separate those drinks again no way so the body is referring to is the spiritual body the two spirits combined now in witchcraft two witches fornicate for the purpose of exchanging energies or powers which are spirits so when you see witches fornicating they're doing it for the exchange of spirits but blind witches which are people who are living in sin and not knowing that their lifestyle is 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 a part and parcel of witchcraft they're having sex thinking it's just for pleasure meanwhile the spirits that are involved compelling them are energy harvesters stealing from them transferring generational curses 
And now more spirits have access. The more immorality, the more generational curses can be mm. spread right. to families that were not even in the bloodline. Because line. it's not done in the practice of God. Yes, yeah. it's outside. Outside the realm of God. Exactly. Mm. So, the result is that so much divine energy is released in the under the auspices of marriage. So much divine energy is released that a new life can be introduced into the equation. That's how babies come. The spirit, first of all, comes. Remember, life is spiritual. So before the physical body is even formed, the spirit is deposited. And the, the man and the woman made that bank withdrawal of life. They made that withdrawal during the love act. So when they withdrew from, and where did it come from? From God. You're making withdrawals from God spiritually. And then you see that the seed gets to the egg and then produces a zygote and it, it begins to form a physical child but it started in the spirit realm that's why sex is spiritual mm. before it is physical and they, then they now this breaks the idea of other... planned parenthood where they advocate for abortions mm. i mean abortions are not in the plan of god regardless no matter how the child is coming into the world as long as god has blessed you with that gift please give birth don't go for abortions Man, so the result of that union during sex, during the climax of godly marriage, is that so much divine energy is released that a new life can be introduced into the equation. And sometimes even more than one in the case of twins or triplets or quadruplets or what have you. So the moment can be compared to an explosion that releases an enormous amount of energy. That energy can be harvested by the spirit that compelled you to commit the sin if you're not married and the person you're sleeping with is not your wife. If that explosion takes place within the context of marriage, the union is blessed by God. When God receives that energy, he blesses it and gives it back to you to strengthen your marriage and bless it again. The energy is preserved in the family and that same energy is used to provide for the very children it produces and to, to provide a legacy, a heritage, and that's why there's wealth in families, right? That is the very same divine energy that is applied during the process of earning and doing business. So the energy that is supplied because God blessed them and God said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue and have dominion. So in the fruitfulness package is the divine energy required for provision. The divine energy required to create wealth. The divine Amen. energy that is required to for you. To bring life to bring, into existence. Yes. Mm. And to provide for that life. Amen. And to provide a heritage. And a good man leaves an inheritance for his children and his children's children. And that means God is blessing and dust. Exactly. Mm. From generation to generation. Amen. And that's why I, I believe that the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was, it might have been a sexual sin. Don't make this a doctrine, but, and let's not get too far into it, but it might have been a sexual sin because of how it affected Adam's ability to provide for his wife and how God judged Eve's process of procreation. That sin made the process of provision a more difficult one. Look what it says in Genesis 3. Uh, verse 17, and, and unto Adam he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree, of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth unto thee, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread, till you return into the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and unto dust you shall return. So you see, when Adam sinned, it affected his ability to provide for himself and for his family. But the woman's procreation process was also judged. You can tell how what the sin was by the judgment that came. The Bible says, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In the sorrow, in sorrow shall you bring forth children, and your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. So you know that the judgment had something to do with the crime. Yes. It wasn't just a, a fruit. It must have been more than that. The Bible was speaking and in a way that is is uh, holy. <laughs> or and then also when God said that he shall rule over you, 
God was re, re like he was okay. repairing the damages that had been uh, caused because the woman had taken charge and and yet it's the man who is supposed to be in charge and protect the woman and guide her and the woman was supposed to just to to support and help yes to be a helpmeet and yes. now you see where the feminine movement is to break that that law of god in fact everything that satan does if you examine it closely there is a specific law that satan is attempting to go break. to break yeah so when Adam sinned, a cataclysmic explosion took place and certain energies which belonged to Adam were transferred to Lucifer. Another verse in Proverbs suggests that the sin may have been a sexual one too because in Proverbs 30 verse 20, the Bible says, such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wickedness. So the Bible kind of describes the sex act as eating and drinking, which is which is a way of speaking that the Bible speaks in. It's the style. So in Bible, in Bible language or Hebrew, a sex act can be described as eating. Additionally, intimacy in the word of God is described as knowing. The Bible says, And Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Genesis 4.1 So one English version calls it carnal knowledge. To have carnal knowledge it has been argued that the term carnal knowledge uh, comes from medieval canon law and suggests that embodied knowledge of oneself and another human being can be attained in the intimacy of love making so there is a knowing adam knew his wife eve that is intimacy that connotes the intimacy of sexual union the knowledge that is attained is as a result of the unification of spirits during climax if the sex act is classified as a sin such as masturbation fornication adultery or homosexuality the exchange of energies that takes place is demonic you will receive a demon inside you and other spirits will harvest your divine energies the result is that your life will become more difficult the energies that attract good things into your life have been taken away your wealth your virtue your value has been stolen the result, hardship, frustration, rejection, poverty, misfortune, depression, sometimes diseases, most times diseases, and or infection and misery are the result. Having knowledge of truth is the possession of correct and accurate information. Having intimate knowledge of a person is having that person's essence and energies inside of your spirit. It's more than just a soul tie. It is another person inside of your spirit and it's going to take the blood of Jesus to cleanse your spirit man from that defilement so that you can be free to serve the Lord. Scripture says, how much more shall the blood of Christ cleanse our conscience from dead works that we may serve the Lord? Yeah. My God, my God, my God, the word of God is precise, exact. It is the key that fits the lock. So Hebrews, that, that scripture is in Hebrews 9, verse 13, 14. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And the Amplified Version gives a bit more understanding. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Holy Spirit willingly offered himself unblemished, that is, without moral or spiritual imperfection, as a sacrifice to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works and lifeless observances to serve the ever-living God? That's Hebrews 9.14. So, when you got born again, your spirit man was reborn instantly. The Bible says, 1 Peter 1, 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. But your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions, was not born again, and neither was your body. That spirit man is now one with Christ and can receive divine information from Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 1 9 proves this for God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers but 
And that's Romans 1 9. But if it is defiled, it can be corrupted and revert to the old ways if the mind which is contained in the soul is not renewed. So it must be deprogrammed from the world's way of thinking and reprogrammed with information like this that is able to set you free. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You'll be amazed. Sometimes it doesn't even take the laying on of hands. You just need to know certain secrets. Once you know, you say, "Ah, enough is enough. I'm not going to masturbate anymore. I'm not going to fornicate anymore. Nobody laid hands on me for me to stop doing that. There's things I found out. I said, ah, to hell with that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. The Bible says the that Spirit. also mm. resist the devil. And resist the devil flee. and he will flee. And then when it comes to fornication, he says flee. Yes. Fornication. Oh. Even if a pastor lays hands on you and pours anointing oil on your head and uh, you don't flee fornication, fornication you'll be was, a victim. It was no good. You have to go back for more oil. You know, like Joseph, man. Joseph had to flee. <laughs> yeah. Because fornication starts in the spirit realm. Yes. By even looking at a woman and coveting that woman mm -hmm. yeah. is already sin. So mm -hmm. that I think that's why God put emphasis on fleeing, mm -hmm. not to come any close to it at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Ephesians 4 verse 23 and 24, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which is after God, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the mind must be deprogrammed from the sinful way of thinking and reprogrammed with the word of God and knowledge accurately reveals the consequences of sin. That kind of knowledge that reveals the consequences of sin can help you because it's not just the same temptation anymore. Now, when you look at the sexy person that you used to fall for so easily, now you're thinking, oh yeah, she's sexy, but uh, I don't need the, mm. the generational curses. I don't want to give my divine energy to devils. Mm. I don't want it spirit spouses. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't want to wake up and find myself, I've wet the bed and I've mm. renewed a covenant with a demon spirit that's going to bring misfortune on mm. my life. I don't want to find myself lacking the divine energy that brings good things into my life. You understand? So there's a lot of this. Now that is what it call, what is called to be spiritually minded. You're thinking of the consequences of your, you're not just thinking of the pleasure. Mm -hmm. That's maturity. And the consequence, the Bible says the wages of sin mm. is death. death. Yes. And death is what? Separation from God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and here it says in chapter 6, now the body is not for sexual immorality, mm -hmm. but for the Lord, mm -hmm. and the Lord for the body. Mm -hmm. and, the bo uh, uh, and God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Amen. Amen. So, when fornication or masturbation or adultery is committed, the evil presence that enters your spirit now has access to your mind. It begins to attack your brain, and the strategy is to cause your brain to release too much dopamine from your nerve cells into your brain. Dopamine is like a delivery man. It delivers. It delivers pleasure rewards to the brain. So your brain is wired to pursue rewards. So the cycle of pleasure addiction is introduced. So you'll keep seeking the rewards that come from that fountain. But Jesus said, if you drink from that fountain, you will thirst again. Mm. But if you drink from the fountain that he will give you, it's you'll like never thirst. Experience. Yes, mm. yes. You, can, you will never thirst for that which cannot satisfy. Mm. He can purify your heart, which he does with fire. John the Baptist was speaking of Jesus in Matthew 3.12. He says, whose fan is in his hand, mm. and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So there's a fire that you must begin to burn with if you're going to overwhelm and overcome the strange fires mm. that you used to burn with. He can destroy that addiction by first casting out the devil, casting out that evil spirit by fire, mm. and then reducing the dopamine released back to normal, to normal so that dopamine overload no longer drives your life. Mm. Dopamine overload brings poverty. The Bible says in 
Proverbs 21, 17, he that loves pleasure shall be a poor man. Mm. He that loves wine and oil shall not be rich. Was the, we can also help even our children to have low levels of dopamine mm. so that it doesn't come uh, in, in full swing mm -hmm. and the, it, it brings them to that kind of desires and pleasures. In other words, we, we reward them for doing right. For doing right. And so when they see that they received a reward mm. from daddy and mommy for doing the right thing, With Zoe. then, yeah, like Zoe, whenever mm. we, she does something right, we, we applaud clap. her, we clap if our we hands. If we don't, she would remind she says, us. Yeah. yeah, so when she sees that we clapped our hands for her, mm. dopamine is released to her frontal lobe and she feels pleasure mm. that her work has been appreciated. Mm. So, he that loves pleasure shall be a poor man. There's a wrong kind of dopamine that can be sent to your brain. Mm. That dopamine that comes from immorality, mm. from sexual fantasy, fantasies, like watching pornography. Mm. That dopamine that is released is part and parcel of the addiction mm. that is similar to cocaine or heroin addiction. Mm. So the or the Bible says, he that loves pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loves wine and oil shall not be rich. The mm. oil is for the massage. The wine is for the release of dopamine. Mm. He that is addicted to that combination will be poor because he continually releases explosions of divine energy, which is stolen. And that leaves him void of yeah. the power to create wealth. Even if he knows what to do to create it, the drive is gone. Yeah. Even the ability to make it happen is gone. There are things, there are elements in creation there for you to possess anything, anything that exists in this world contains energies. Mm. And so Instead those of things having good pleasure mm. you have confusion. Yeah, mm. and those things that you need require energy. Mm. And it is the energy that is operating on the inside of you that is needed to attract those things. Mm. But if you lack that energy because you released it mm. in an ungodly union, oh, life becomes more difficult. And that brings us to sex magic. Sometimes uh yeah, it's called sex magic. Is any type of sexual activity used in magical, ritualistic, or otherwise religious and spiritual pursuits? One practice of sex magic is using sexual arousal or orgasm with visualization of a desired result. A premise posited by sex magicians is the concept that sexual energy is a potent force that can be harnessed to transcend one's normal perceived reality. So, even the sex magicians, these people who are deep in the occult, witches, they understand the power of sex magic. So a witch will have sex not for the purpose of just the pleasure, but rather he's energy harvesting. So that's why this old hag will go to a university and and make it rain on this young girl and she's seeing all this money and now he's sleeping with her. But what she doesn't understand is that during this process of sex, he's visualizing his political ambitions. He's visualizing how rich he's becoming. And robbing her of the energy. And robbing her of these yeah. energies. Using it for, for those yeah. things. Yes. Mostly the lecturers, politicians, mm. businessmen, yes. those city tycoons. Yes. And this brings us to the Freemasons whom we have been yeah. talking about in this docu-series. Mm. You see this symbol of Freemasonry, the compass and the square? You're looking at the male and the female mm. in Congress or in union. And the G in the middle represents the generative principle, which means that mm. the person is releasing or he's having an orgasm. Mm. And the energy that is released during that process is being harvested. And so that's why when you get, if you know any Freemason, that is on the 30, 33rd degree or what, or what have you, even below that. Mm. But if you know them, you know that they have an unusual appetite for sex. Mm. And that appetite, they so, cannot be satisfied by one person. So it's a common practice. They, yes. That's why they have it as a symbol. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Freemasonry is a sex cult. It is mm. the symbol of Freemasonry itself is the sex act. Mm. And not just any, not just any sex act, it is at the moment of climax that's what the symbol mm. recognize uh, represents so 
There are false, there are many sp- false spiritual leaders, mm-hmm. so called pastors, false prophets, false apostles, captains of industry, doctors, attorneys, lawyers, bankers, magistrates, judges, especially politicians who are involved in this cult Free called Mason. Freemasonry. Mason, yeah. People who are in this cult are very sexually active. That means that their virtue has been drained. They are going to need another supply of divine energy in order to get wealth. So these occultists have copious amounts of sex because during the sex act, they are taking the divine energies of intimacy from this poor, ignorant soul and imagining a better life for themselves using your energies. This is why so many politicians are so sexually active and why the people they sleep with usually die after being with them. If someone is not praying for them and if they don't get saved, their lives will become more and more difficult and the result is misfortune combined with desperation, which turns and in turn brings more sin and death. Mm-hmm. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is, is death, death, but that the gift of God me. is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. That reminds me of a girl we studied with in university who slept with a celebrity and then like a few days after she ran mad oh. and this girl was very brilliant she was uh, she was studying and she was doing business administration and the mother had hopes in the girl and then uh, she started interacting with this celebrity i tried to stop her i spoke to her about it because how it came they they had offered me some money to go and appear in a video in a music video and they were willing to to, to pay me whatever I want to be paid. And I say, no, I'm born again. I no longer dance. I no longer uh, interact with secular artists. Amen. So when the girl heard me turning down the offer, she followed the men. And she told them, if if Erica, because they, they looked for me in the hostel. They, I don't know how they found out that I was at that university. So when I turned down the offer, uh, the girl followed them. And I saw her because I had I was at the rooftop. So she followed them and then went to the parking and convinced them that for her she's ready. And I told her, I know that man. He He's not going to work with you because you are not his target. He was targeting me because of the information that I have. And I said, no. So you've taken that offer, but you're not going to get the money that they are offering. He's going to use you because that's what he does. He sleeps with girls. And whatever happens to you, you after that will be up to you because... I have warned you, but you're going ahead following this guy. And he said, ah, you, when you got saved, you became foolish. So don't think everybody can just turn that amount of money. By then it was much because at university, uh, somebody gives you like half a million, you know, a a university student, that is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So um, she went in for it. When she came back, she first uh, avoided me for some time. And then uh, I finally, we met and I asked her, I said, my friend, did you, did you sleep with that guy? Because I know him. He loves sleeping with young girls and especially a brilliant mind like you. He wouldn't uh, hesitate to take advantage. Did he do what I told you he's going to do? The girl avoided that topic. But what hurt me is like a few days after we had spoken, she started acting funny. And then the mother had to come. They took her. Later we found out she lost her mind. We were supposed to graduate together. She didn't graduate because she was in a mental institute. So a vacuum star destiny mm-hmm. stolen by yes. a celebrity. It is during that sex act that your star can be stolen. stolen. Yes. So these politicians or this you know, this baller, you don't know how this guy is balling. They call it balling when the guy has a lot of money. Yeah. You don't know how that person got that money. And nowadays, it might be a man taking out little boys, young boys. Or it might be a woman, a sugar mommy, taking out, you know, the young man and making money rain on him and, and, and treating him, you know, like a puppet. Yeah. But she's harvesting energies a lot of these the, the, you don't know how this person got wealthy mm. you don't know how they got all this money and you're willing to take shortcuts to get it and as a man soweth so also shall he reap yeah. so they make money they make it rain on these poor souls who have not known the lord and the result is that their energies will be harnessed to further the selfish ambitions of this person who is sleeping with them 
In other words, they look into your destiny and steal your star. Yes. By sapping all the energy out of you. Yes. Is the demon the inside demon. of them can mm. see they can look around and see who's pure, mm. who has good energy. Yep. And they can see, oh, okay, this person has plenty. And that is also the reason why many of them get younger children and they molest them. Yes. Because they see the purity in these younger children. And that's what's going on in Freemasonry. Face, yeah. That's what's going on in Freemasonry. In fact, um, they spoke of Anton LaVey. They spoke of this other Alester Crowley, mm. who was an occult uh, master or what have you. And they called him the most wicked man in the world or the most wicked man who ever lived because of the number of children that he both sacrificed and sexually abused. And part of sex magic which is a book he wrote he wrote a book on sex magic but part of it is harvesting the energies of an innocent child it can make them extremely wealthy that's why you find them becoming rather wealthy and that's also why you'll find that the tendency is for young people to think i want to sell my soul to the devil so that i can get rich they think that the devil has riches but really what the devil has is he has stolen they from the children of god future he stole from them and that's why it appears as if he has all this wealth but he doesn't god has placed wealth inside of you everything you're going to need for this life he has placed it inside of you but if you've defiled yourself through pornography through immorality through partying drugs alcohol or what have you and through the sex act and through masturbation you willingly gave up what god had placed inside of you and that's the tragedy of it and so but we thank God that what Jesus did was to help us get all of this back. back. Amen. So Amen. so they suck up the energies. These celebrities are doing the same thing. Everyone in the occult who is sexually active is an energy harvester. They suck up your energies for their own selfish gain. And the result is that they rise while you fall. Is that not the modus operandi of witchcraft? The enrichment of one at the expense of many? That's how it works. And Isaiah 61 verse 8, God says, For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for wrongdoing. And I will faithfully reward my people for their suffering and make an everlasting covenant with them. So God wants you to know what he has placed inside of you, even if you, like Joseph, might be a slave right now or feel like a slave right now. Don't think that you're cheap. And you, you might be going to an office to apply for a job and the boss is saying, hey, just one night and you can get this amazing salary, this amazing contract. Don't sell your birthright for a bowl of soup. Mm. The demon in him can see the brightness in you and that devil wants it. And the only thing that can safeguard it is the strength of your conviction in God. So see what they do, they, they offer to give you a job as soon as you sleep with him and then you think it's going to happen only one time so he will sleep with you and give you that job or even not give it to you but in case he gives it to you he will keep sleeping with you until he feels that he has taken whatever he needs to take and then and after that you. they either fire you or send you to a lower position and then mm. avail that position for another person with the same with 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 new energies because they survive on energies mm. so it's not only you that he's telling that he wants to sleep with he has just know that he has been sleeping with all the people that apply for the job. By the time he wants to sleep with you, you may even be the 50th or uh, maybe th 30th or 20th yeah. person that he's sleeping with. It's the spirit of lust. Yeah, it's, yes. in, it's inside. It's an energy harvester. And yeah. so that you must understand the law of compromise. Mm. That which you compromise to obtain, you must compromise to maintain. Mm. So if you're in for a penny, you're in for a dollar. If you step into that door, your whole body's going in, not just the leg. Don't just think you're going to put your little finger in there. No, no, the devil doesn't play that. He's taken everything. Mm. So this is why you see the wicked rising and the good falling low, falling down. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 7 um, speaks of this, this phenomenon. He says, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. What does he mean? He's seeing the, the, those who God has made rich 
being very poor and those whom God would expect to be very poor mm. because of their poor decisions becoming very rich. Mm. How is this happening? How is the wicked Extreme. man living long? Yeah. Mm. How is this wicked witch wicked extending her life? What is going on? They, sh they should have perished long time ago. I've seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants the upon the earth. The same thing of Esau and Jacob. Mm. Yeah, selling of birthrights. It's a robbery. Robbery. They are tricking them into, you know, uh, giving out what what is precious and what is valuable for, for things that are not even valuable. Mm -hmm. yeah. For short-term gains. Mm -hmm. Shortcuts. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 look at Proverbs chapter seven, um, from verse six. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot, which is a prostitute, and subtle of heart. That means she's very cunning and charming with her words. Verse 11, she is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Those peace offerings represent offerings that, you know, she offered sacrifices to her gods. I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet you diligently to seek your face, and I have found you. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloes and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves, for the good man is not at home. He is gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goes after her straightway as an ox goes to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hastes to the snare and knows not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O you children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not your heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths, for she has cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. So the Bible is giving us knowledge, but the way it's put the words, you can't, you might not understand exactly what he's trying to explain to you. He's speaking as a father would speak to his son in, as, and the, the old English kind of skews the meaning, but energies are being stolen and those energies bring desperation and desperate people do desperate things. And the further away you step away from God, the lower you go until you find yourself going down into the chambers into of the death. Grave. My man. So now you understand the Hollywood casting couch. That's what's yeah. going on in Hollywood. That's what's going on in a lot of these movie making um, industries right now. If you want the part, you want the part for this big budget movie, the director, the casting director is saying, okay, I need one night with you. Don't sell your soul. Don't sell your birthright. Don't sell your star in exchange for one night you think it's it, it won't matter that's exactly what matters that's exactly what the devil wants you to think because that is the night when you lose your star that's the night when you lose your divine energy and the enemy begins to supply himself with what belongs to you from that night so furthermore humanity through their perversions are supplying the energies that cleo and the fallen one need to function these beings harvest the energy supplied when a child is raped. When an infant is sodomized or during homosexual sex, these beings are harvesting massive amounts of energy and using it to produce bodies for themselves, to produce clones, to produce offsprings, which are judgments against humanity because everything that operates under the realm of the accursed belongs to Satan, for he is cursed and he can do a lot of damage with accursed people. 
A wise person accumulates their energy and encapsulates it in virtue, which is a behavior showing high moral standards, mm. which is what Joseph demonstrated. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, the Bible says, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Do you remember when the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of Jesus' garment? He said, and Jesus said, somebody has touched me for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. In Luke chapter 8 verse 46. And in 2 Peter 1 5 it says, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. So, this thing called virtue, it can be increased, it can bless others, and this thing called virtue can heal. Mm -hmm. Because the woman with the issue of blood, when she touched Jesus, she Jesus said, I felt virtue come out of me. So what is this thing called virtue? It is a holy energy. Divine, divine energy. energy. Yes. It's replacing what was lost. Yes, and that divine energy can be built up in the place of prayer. This is why we spend long hours mm -hmm. in the prayer. place of prayer mm -hmm. because virtue is built up. God mm -hmm. deposits virtue whenever you go up to visit God. He said, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? That's prayer. Who shall stand in the holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, which means the pursuit of this world, trying to compromise your integrity to get this world's material goods, who has not compromised his integrity, nor sworn deceitfully. That means lies have not proceeded out of your mouth. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord. Yeah. and righteousness from the God of his salvation. What is contained in that blessing? Virtue. Yes, I've been explaining to, I, I mean, I, I shared my testimony with a few people, but among the things that my grandmother did, she used to buy me clothes from when I was young. And my dad can also bear witness. And all the clothes, whenever she was giving to me, she would say, don't give out these clothes this is where your blessings are. And one time I asked her, Grandma, you keep saying that I don't give out these clothes. What if I'm tired of them? She said, somebody can steal your, your, for her she said, your blessings. Somebody can steal your blessings from your clothes because your clothes carry what you carry. And then mm -hmm. avoid sharing clothes with other people because you'll mm -hmm. be carrying what they carry. Sometimes what they are carrying is not good. Mm -hmm. So she said, if you're tired of these clothes, you burn them. That was according to her. B but now, don't give, them away. Do don't give them away. Now I understand. Even the Bible, when the apostles were anointed, the hankies were carrying the anointing on their lives. Yeah. And then also in witchcraft, when somebody wants to bewitch you, they ask for your point of contact. And it's something to do with clothes, uh, where you have stepped the dust. Because the Bible says wherever you step, you have dominion. So they get that. They get the clothes. They, because the clothes, they want to defile that energy that is on your life. So if you've been walking in favor, they speak over those clothes and they defile the energy that is on your life. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, when, when you mentioned that, uh, when you are saying uh, that, I, I just connected exactly to what my grandmother was saying about the woman touching the helm of the garment mm -hmm. of Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. there's something that she took from Jesus, but she did not touch him directly. With her faith, she, she touched just... the helm. And uh -huh. I've noticed that many ladies who stay in the same room and they share clothes have the same characters. They tend to <laughs> behave this. Even if they are not sisters, they, they start even looking the, looking alike, <laughs> uh, they start behaving in the same way, reasoning same the same way. way. Uh -huh. So we, I'm not saying I'm not creating a doctrine. Me, I'm just telling you what I got from my grandmother because for her she was spiritually alert, and now I'm also connecting to what the woman with the issue of blood did. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I would never and. Besides, I was growing with my clothes. She gave me those clothes. I was in primary three. We burnt those clothes when I was 16. They were fitting me and they were brand new. So mm -hmm. I don't know what, what was there. Either she gave me, I don't know. I don't when know. When we were burning them, don't you remember the energy that was coming yes, out? Yes, they were exploding mm -hmm. like bombs. Like bullets. 
And these are clothes that are clothes. that were burning and exploding. And my clothes never used to get old. My shoes never used to get old. They were just like they were when they were new. <laughs> and if you try to steal, you would regret. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there was this this man I mentioned earlier called Alistair Crowley, who was the most wicked man in the world. They say he wrote a book called The Book of the Law. Now, it was dictated to him by a demon at the foot of the Egyptian pyramids. The most potent sacrifice in it is the sexual vampirism of a child. So Satan has deceived the Freemason that through sexual depravity, one can achieve the power of a god. The Freemason thinks that those who have not been initiated into the occult secrets are vulgar and profane, almost less than human. He falsely believes that he or she is better than others who have not taken the oath of secrecy, an oath of secrecy sworn unto death. And what is the secret? The abuse, rape, sodomy, and sacrifice of innocent children in exchange for their own selfish social, political, or economic ambitions. The it's, lust it's of the, the flesh, the lust of the ass, the oh. lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, oh. and the pride of life. The name. Yeah. The same spirit. In, described in Revelation, uh, in that woman, the the, the prostitute, mm -hmm. and the war. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and th that's what the children of Israel were doing when they were worshiping Moloch. Mm. And when you see Moloch, or pr pronounced Molech, when you see them worshiping Molech, they're offering the child. And the energy is now from the child. Everything that child was supposed to do, that energy can be transferred. And that's what they're doing when they're offering their children mm. onto Moloch. He's giving them that energy. Obviously, he's also adding sicknesses and also adding diseases. It's not just good things that the devil gives. So sad. I've said he doesn't said have anything good to give. He, anything that he has, you, you can see he stole from the child. Mm. He stole from the parents. He's stealing the from future. the whole society. Yeah. So sad. So, I started seeing Rihanna dressing the boys like a, like girls, her, her sons like girls. That's another way of offering your child unto mm. Moloch. So I wish they knew that Lucifer has given them knowledge that will lead them into the judgment of God Almighty. And the result will be eternal damnation, torment, and destruction. God's word says, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile, mm. but glory, honor and peace to every man that works good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there is no respecter of persons with God. So that's Romans chapter 2, verse 8 through 11. So if Freemasonry makes good men better, why do they have so many secrets? Don't you want all men to become better? There's a lot of contradictions mm. and things that Freemasons should just ask themselves. If what you're doing is right, why are you hiding? All right, so, but the downfall of civilizations become reality when more and more men begin to realize how the super rich and powerful are getting that power. And they begin to do it too. Until, it, until the evil fills the land and the judgment of God rains down upon them like Sodom and Gomorrah. Because in Sodom, that's what they were doing. It wasn't just a matter of pleasure. No, 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 no. They wanted those men that came in and, and those men were angels. But when those men of Sodom and Gomorrah saw those men, they saw purity and they said, oh, mm, I, need, must have them. I need that energy. So they were banging, they were going to crush uh, Lot's house to get to those men. And Lot was begging. He was saying, please don't do this thing. Here, take my two virgin daughters and have sex with them and do whatever you want with them, but leave these men alone. I mean, Lot, really? You're going to offer your children and to these? Know, so but, that, but those men wanted those men wanted the sexual energies that were in, the, or the divine energies. They, they, saw the energy. they saw the energy and they, did, and, they, and they thought, oh, if I get that energy, I'll become more powerful. And that's one of the things that was taking place in Sodom and Gomorrah. They, any, any passers-by that would come from the traveling maybe from point A to point B and they stop by in that town maybe to stock up on supplies and whatnot, oh. the men of that town would bring them into the city square and rape them. That's what was going on hmm. that, because they were energy harvesters. And that's how the, 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 the rich men of Sodom were rich because they were deep in the occult. They were energy harvesters. That reminds me. I... 
it's possible to it's possible for a parent to have virgin daughters in a land like Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. It's very possible. So we have no excuse. You can say, oh, the environment, the society. No, it, it still comes back to us as parents. What are we doing about the situation? If Lot managed to have virgins in such an environment, then it's, it's possible for we, the parents, to also raise uh, morally upright children. Yeah, it's very possible because you look at the situation, how it was. Mm. Sorry. The, like, you look at how the situation was. Mm. You look at how the situation was. Men raping men in the city square. You look at how the situation was. Men raping men in the city square. Immorality at a high level to the point of God wanting to destroy the whole city. And uh, and then you look at these girls, they are virgin girls in such a community because we are in a, in times whereby if you if you stand out and say I am a virgin, people will start crucifying you. They will start insulting you. They will start virginity now is like a, an insult. It, it looks like this person is so backward. You're outdated. You're outdated. You know. So it's very possible for us, the parents, to encourage our children to stay pure. And to Man. train them in the ways of God. Man, so so you see, when this secret gets out, obviously a secret between two is no secret at all. If we know, then a lot of other people out there know that there is a power in abusing children. That's why the, the number of pedophilia cases are only increasing, are on the increase. Yeah. Are on the increase because mm -hmm. men are finding out about this thing. And so... As they realize that this thing gives them a certain amount of power, what is that going to lead to? It's going to lead to a race. It's going to lead to a domino effect that results in more and more people practicing this thing until the evil has filled the land. So if we don't make this thing, if we don't bring this thing abroad and, and blow the trumpet and sound the alarm. I mean, this is what churches should be exposing. That's why I, I get so bored of churches that just preach these watered down messages. There are stuff going on in society that people need to know about, that we need to be praying about, that we need to be dealing with in spiritual warfare. People are having these watered down messages and you're going to have a great day. You know, you're, tomorrow's going to be a brighter day than yesterday. And all those, that's a watered down message. We need fire. In this, in this current day and age where there is darkness, the Bible says darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness, the people. You're going to need fire. You, you're not, you don't just need a little light. That song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You're going to need more than a little bit of light. You're going to need an inferno of righteousness because if all you have is a little light in this day and age, the darkness out. thereof will, will extinguish it. Yeah, you know what is happening, Tim? Mm -hmm. In the churches today, you find out that some pastors are also victims. But because they cannot come out of it, so they will prefer to keep quiet. They are mm -hmm. silent about their problems and situations mm -hmm. they feel that when i disclose myself and i say this it will make me lesser a pastor mm -hmm. and people will begin of the course judge. judging me and looking down upon me mm -hmm. and i think by simply keeping quiet they are covering something and they are retaining their power their position their, their salary yeah their package but that is a lie because it is through confession, it is through yielding to God mm. and declaring it that you get released. Yes, the power of sin is in its secrecy. Mm. So if you expose it to the light of day, then it loses its power. But if you keep it a secret, uh, so horn and your brain, the, inside your brain, there are some things, there's things called neurons. Neurons are cells that receive and send messages between the body and the brain. The brain has about 100 billion neurons, which are the basic working units of the nervous system. Neurotransmitters send chemical messages between the neurons. A neurotransmitter called dopamine helps, helps the flow of information to the front of the brain, which is linked to thought and emotion. It is also linked to reward systems. 
So this is the approximate location of the nucleus accumbens in the brain. So sex is pleasure and our brains are hardwired to seek pleasure. Every time we receive pleasure, whether it be from sex, drugs, food, or simply a pat on the back for a job well done, the brain reward centers are activated. The neurotransmitter responsible for all things pleasurable, dopamine, is released from a tiny nucleus located deep within our primitive limbic lizard brain called the ventral tegmental area. So, um, without getting too technical, there's a cycle that takes place every time pleasure is achieved. And it's that cycle of pleasure and rewards, deed, pleasure, reward, deed, pleasure. That cycle right there is what fuels addiction. And God has made that brain function the way mm -hmm. it functions because he had an idea mm -hmm. of bringing up a family that is healthy, that has grown and that will be resilient mm -hmm. and stand firm even in the test of times. Mm -hmm. So when a child is not helped at that stage, the probability is that they will fall victims mm -hmm. of, uh, of all these things. Of that addictions. Of addictions mm -hmm. because their brains will dysfunction and of course they will find themselves lacking and of course they will be craving for this kind of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And they will be, you know, outcasts of the society. Yes. So we have to fight mm -hmm. so that our children can be protected, can find that protection, and of course become resilient in, in all situations. That's Amen. how we can help the generations that are, will come after us, even mm -hmm. when things are so bad. Amen. Mm -hmm. And... So the neurotransmitter responsible for all things pleasurable is dopamine. Dopamine is like the UPS delivery guy. His job is to deliver a message of pleasure to the brain so that it can release pleasure signals through the body through these neurons. So the reward center in the brain compels men to repeat actions that resulted in pleasure rewards being released. There are rewards for various foods, Rewards for achievements, rewards for humorous moments, rewards for receiving compliments from others for your appearance or your performance in school, etc. But when you watch pornography, an excessive amount of dopamine is delivered to the reward center. The reward center struggles to cope. Adjustments are made to cope with the excess. An expansion takes place. The next time, more dopamine is going to be needed just to get the same feeling as what you felt the previous time. This process of increased dopamine requirement for pleasure rewards is a rabbit hole that leads into chronic addiction, addiction. and bondage. Needing it all the time. Mm -hmm. The, 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 the no magicians, the, the ancient magicians called it the shackles of sex life. Mm where you are compelled, requiring more pleasure, more dopamine, more rewards. So you're shackled in that life. You can look at this image here. It says, here is your brain. Here is your brain on heroin. And here is your brain on porn. You can see the effect of the normal brain, the heroin brain, and then the porn brain. And that is, that is... Yeah, it's decimated. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is destroyed. So the further you descend into this cesspit of debauchery and depravity, the more damage you exact on your brain. The more evil spirits send attacks on your pleasure centers, compelling you to seek more pleasure. But now you need to do worse sexual things to get the same amount or the same outcome as before. What you do not realize is that the Coolidge effect has begun to take shape in your brain. The Coolidge effect is a biological phenomenon seen in animals whereby males exhibit the renewed sexual interest whenever a new female is introduced, even after sex with a prior female, but still available sexual partner. So your partner will no longer be able to satisfy you. You are going to need a different partner every time because all of the receptors for That's natural right. pleasures mm -hmm. have been removed. Mm -hmm. 
God can have a, you know sexual intercourse with him as many as it can. Yes, yes. You become like an animal. Yeah. It's the animal effect. Now more dopamine is required for every sexual experience. Normal is not good enough anymore. Mm. Your beautiful wife cannot excite you anymore, anymore. because your pleasure centers anymore. are the size of Texas. They call this person a porn brain. They are dopamine junkies, mm. driven more, driven by more demons than they care to count. The Bible says in Jeremiah 10, 23, Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his steps. Mm. That means man is continuously compelled by one spirit or the other. Man does not walk alone. There's no human being on the earth who walks alone. Mm. There's a spirit. Either this spirit or that one. So if a single man tells you, ladies, single ladies, if he says, I'm, I'm real spiritual, everybody's spiritual. <laughs> Life is spiritual. But what spirit is compelling you? And do you have problems with pornography? Do you have problems with masturbation? Have you ever had problems with masturbation? You need to ask him questions. You need to ask those questions. Yeah. Yeah, have you ever men. had problems with immorality? Such men are called Casanovas. Mm -hmm. Do you have do you have issues with with uh, sexual immorality? Do you like to to have different partners? Have you ever been an addict? You need to, you need to ask those mm -hmm. questions. If you died, can you can you afford your funeral? Mm -hmm. You need to know. You need to ask questions. A wise person asks questions. Very true. So at this point, you cannot be aroused by the little things. The little things are the normal areas of pleasure that God has given to a husband and a wife. Mm -hmm. On a scale of one to 10, the normal amount is around two or three, depending on how sensitive you are. But the porn brain needs nine and 10, and that leads them into a new world of dopamine demand that introduces them into higher dimensions of evil. Mm. Ephesians 6 tells us that we are what we're wrestling against, principalities, against powers, yes. against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm. Those spiritually wicked spirits are so depraved that they will take you into heights of depravity you never imagined possible. Your life will completely transform into an object of slavery. The Indian sages called it the shackles of sex life. Every level of evil has greater than the level before it and greater spirits that rule that realm. In order to please them, they will require greater evil. The result is promotion in the world of iniquity. Before that demon releases the dopamine that can excite you, you'll find yourself grooming a child. This is the economy of porn brains populating the higher levels of the Masonic Lodge, the nightclubs, the concerts, the secret societies, and even some churches. Yes, and most of the choir members are members of the LGBTQ, the people that are in the ministry, in the administration. And you, you cannot, in many churches, you cannot come out with such a conversation like one that we have because mm -hmm. they'll feel like you're making their people uncomfortable. And when you talk about it, the pastor will come in self-defense. You know, they feel like you're attacking them. Yet you're not even attacking any pastor. You're simply telling people the truth. If you see your pastor associating with a LGBTQ, he's now free to wed. He's now, he's, he's advocating for inclusivity. He'll tell you that he... He's, uh, he's, yeah. he's working with the sinners because Jesus uh, worked with sinners, but the sinners are not changing. They're not confessing and coming out of their sin, but they are rather staying in church comfortably. Then, my brother, my sister, you could be in a wrong place. And also sometimes the source of income is coming from is coming there, from the, of course, uh, from of course. The sponsorship, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and they yeah. don't want to mess up the money. Yes. They want to keep getting the bag. Yes. So what is the result? The result Depravity. is... Depravity. Yeah. yeah. Sexual immorality that is only escalating, energy harvesting, star stealing, soul hunters, a gathering of depravity. And if we, if if the man of God is not is does not have his faith in God, then what happens is he begins to rely upon another source of income, and that source of income will always lead you to depravity. Before that demon releases the dopamine that can excite you, you'll find yourself grooming a child. This is the economy of porn brains populating the higher levels of the Masonic Lodge, the nightclubs, the concerts, the secret societies the corporate world. These men begin to suffer from porn-induced 
erectile dysfunction. The only way out is to stop because if you don't, you'll move to the next level, which may be homosexuality or just straight up pedophilia. Now mm -hmm. they, f they call those who are addicted to having sex with children maps minor attracted persons to to kind of take away the the sting from the word pedophile they call a minor attracted person no he's a pedophile that way you'd know that this is a sin you the sting of the word should remain there if you're fornicating you're not just having an affair no that's fornication as soon as i say fornication you know what it is no matter what so the same system operates with junk food. When you eat it, an unusually high dosage of dopamine is released. This dopamine reward leads to addiction, and junk food brain is the result. You can see people, look at just, just look at the size of this person. What happened? Dopamine, dopamine release. Every time they eat a specific food, ice cream or some fudge brownies or yeah. chips or what have you. They kept on eating the pleasure center, kept on demanding more pleasure, mm -hmm. and the dopamine was released, and the cycle continues, obese. and they become obese. Yes. Delta Fos B is a member of the Fos family of transcription factors. It accumulates within a subset of neurons of the nucleus accumbens and dorsal stratum brain regions important for addiction after repeated administration of many kinds of drugs or abuse. Now, this Delta Fos B is a big deal because that is the key to addiction. These are proteins. Delta Fos B are proteins that gather at a subset of your neurons and basically pave a road which leads to the left in terms of right and wrong. It paves a road that smoothens the way back into the same old habits. Delta Fos B causes the dog to return to its vomit, so to speak. Delta Fos B is the paved runway that leads down the rabbit hole of addiction. Mm. So if you're addicted to something you and, it's, and you find yourself so easily sliding back into the old ways, there is a protein that has been released and it's yeah. gathered at, at your neurons called Delta Fos B and mm. that thing causes you to go back and slide back mm. into the same habits. habits. So pornography addiction secretes Delta Fos B which is the same protein that is released during cocaine or heroin or any other class A drug addiction. Pornography addiction is just like heroin addiction. This is why the addict tries to stop but finds it so difficult to. Do you know that pornography was created as a satanic mind control mechanism? Yeah. MK Ultra and other mind control mechanisms were used by intelligence agencies to manipulate and control masses of people or individuals. It's a system. It's a system. It's an economy of exploitation. Mm -hmm. And if the child of God is not aware, they'll be victimized. That's why Jesus said, you shall know the, the truth. truth. He didn't say, you shall take the anointing and fall out on the floor. Nah, mm -hmm. none of that nonsense. He <laughs> said, you shall know the it's truth. And I'm not castigating any, anybody's anointing. People fall down, but the, the point is to get up. Mm. <laughs> You get up the same sometimes. <laughs> yeah. That's what God means here by giving them over to a debased mind. Yes. To do the things which they are not fitting to do. Yes. Yeah. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Mm. It's like my grandmother's, uh, she didn't use, she, 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 she hardly ever wore shoes. They were poor. They were po. They couldn't afford the other O-R. They mm. were po. So my grandmother didn't hardly wore shoes. Her feet had calluses. Her feet had hardened. They had become <laughs> reprobate. Those are reprobate feet. And just like that, there are individuals who have become hardened in their depravity. They got reprobate minds. God gave them over to do that, which is not convenient or does not benefit them. Yeah. So... There is a there is quite a lot of information that we have. Should we continue in the in the next documentary? We just continue with the same topic. Yes, we're going to have to continue with this topic. Yeah. We're going to have to stop here, but we have a lot more information for you. But yes. it it if you've been an addict of masturbation, pornography, um, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, uh, lesbian. Um, 
pedophilia, whatever the case may be. The Lord is so good and gracious. He reaches down into the deepest crevices of mm. depravity to pull out those who are repentant. Mm. He reaches down to pull you out of the pit. Mm. The scripture says he brought me up also out of an horrible pit, yeah. out of the miry clay mm. and set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings mm. and he's put a new song in my heart Ouch. even praise unto our god Amen. many will see it and fear and will trust in the lord first thing you should do get rid of secular music mm. there's nothing like good uh, secular love songs there's nothing because you always have to look at the source Yes. Then secondly, uh, get rid of those websites that you've been uh, using, you know, to watch pornography or hide your phone. If, if you feel you cannot control yourself, hide your phone, ban those magazines, those pornographic magazines, all, that, uh, uh, all those uh, materials that the enemy has been using. If you've bought sex toys, go and ban them because they are taking you to hell. You know, the enemy came to steal, kill, and to destroy, but Jesus came that you may have life and have, have life more abundantly. Yeah, the other people. thing, repent. Repent and make up your mind to fight immorality, resist uh, the enemy and he'll flee from you and flee fornication. If you've been having, um, if you've been fornicating, let's put it uh, straight. If you've been, um, if you've been uh, into sodomy, we don't uh, sugarcoat things here. If the enemy has put you in a corner and you feel he's been stealing your energies and you want to uh, make up uh, with God, there is still a chance. We are not condemning you if you you have aborted. The blood of Jesus is enough. It's sufficient to cleanse you. We are all not talking as saints. We were sinners, but Jesus did it for us and he can do it for you and you can escape. Yes. yes. So when you're, when you're involved in mm. immorality of any kind, especially masturbation, because that's what people do mm. when, you know, when they seek convenience and there's nobody else there. You know, they'll tell ladies to get sex toys because it's better. Um, they'll say that you can't get an STD, you can't get pregnant, you can't get this. They'll talk about uh, all kinds of uh, stupid advantages that are just foolish because they don't take into consideration the spirits that are in the room with you draining or drawing, harvesting your energies. Mm, when, you are, when you are having that orgasm, you don't understand that you're coming out of your body and those demons are causing you to become one with more demons that will require more levels of depravity. You think that that one sex toy is going to be enough? Oh no, you're going to need more. As you walk down the rabbit hole of depravity you're going to require more and more the dope brain mm. the 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 porn brain will just completely deform your mind and you'll be addicted to this thing and your in your energies will have been harvested what you could who knows the billionaire you could have become who knows how many stadiums you should have owned by now who knows what kind of property you should have been you, sh you who knows you should have been a senator you should have been a congress you, you should have been a leader of your community by now mm. but you have given your energies to that which robs and they rob you and then they give that same energy to the people who are willing to sell their souls for it mm. And so Satan has nothing good of his own. Everything he has, he stole. Jesus said the thief comes not but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. And while men, when men masturbate, it's the same effect. You orgasm at that moment, your divine energies are stolen. And Satan deposits a demon inside of you. And now that demon is ingratiated, covenanted in your spirit, man. So even if you try to live right, even if you try to break the habit all of a sudden, you'll find that that spirit will visit you in a dream. And that dream and that, and every time Satan, as soon as you have that orgasm, as soon as you, that spirit enters into you, that spirit has a spouse. Yeah. And it is that spouse that comes to visit you. Spiritual marriages. And that's the spiritual marriage that you have when you're dreaming and you have sex in the dream and, you, and there's a release. What is happening in that release? You. That demon is not only just raping you, but it is harvesting the energy of your orgasm, harvesting the energy mm. of the divine energy that God has given you for dominion. They are harvesting that. That's what Cleo's doing. That's a, and, mm. and the Antichrist needs this energy. 
he needs the atmosphere to be filled with this energy when mm. populations are doing it why because that's the power of witchcraft that's the divine power that satan is stealing and that he wants to transfer over to the antichrist so that he can rule this world Daddy, so, yeah, no, so you don't understand yeah. how 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 much your your activities have severe consequences but they're very real and god wants to give you the truth so that you may know the truth the truth can make you free yeah, there was a time in your life when i was having fantasy dreams mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes you feel like you want to hold on to them because they are kind of bringing you pleasure and uh, yet they are very destructive to your life they are making you addictive and the more you give in to those kind of situations, you find yourself more dependent on that habit that you've cohibited. And so I am encouraging you to give your life to Christ, to know that you can have a renewed mind. The Bible tells us that God can renew our minds so that we can begin a new chapter, a new life. And it's what David prayed for, that creating me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that is too hard for the Lord to do in your life. Mm -hmm. It is never too late for you. Mm -hmm. You can just be open and honest to yourself and say, Lord, I need you. I can't go beyond this. It is not too late. It will only be too late if you allow yourself to die a sinner. But when you commit your life to God, there is nothing that our God cannot do. He will always find a way out of escape for your life, for your generations, for your children, because those children need someone to stand for them, someone to help them, to protect them, to make them resilient against the forces of darkness that are coming in to destroy our generations. Mm -hmm. We speak this not because we really love the situation, but we know that it is the only help you can have to find God so discover God for your life. Amen. Amen. And then also before he prays, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for supporting the World Share Foundation, Real Spiritual Life Center. And uh, for more information on the foundation, right now we are in the process of uh, getting solar systems and the borehole. And then next year we intend to build a school and hospital for those people. Thank you so much. But in case you want to support, you can visit our websites www.lifespiritual.com and www lifespiritual.org or www.worldshare.com you can also uh, check the description box and see how you can support the the cause in Uganda to help the needy and those that really need help. Uh, also, if you are interested in our books, we have quite a number of books. Uh, you can also buy our books on Amazon Kindle or any of our websites. Uh, if you're in Kenya, the numbers are on the screen and in the description box. I just felt like uh, sharing with you because I get many questions from people. And Amen. also the t-shirts, the hoodies, if you want to support our, our initiative to make a movie about my story, you can also uh, get those t-shirts, all those items. Yes. Amen. Mm. And get the No More Sin new t-shirt, the No More Sin logo. I see that the kingdom of darkness have their own symbols. We need our own symbols. And the no sin Amen. symbol is a big it's symbol. A I love it. I think everybody should have one of these shirts I or hoodies. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I yeah. Amen, amen. So if you're out there, you have not given your life to Christ, we'd like to pray with you. And you can do so right now. And if you'd like to be set free, the first step of being set free is by knowledge shall the just be delivered. So you've already you've already gotten ninety percent of it. Ten percent is just the just this you speaking to those devils and saying, Leave my life alone mm -hmm. and sticking by your word. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I have heard your word. I have heard your word. I believe, I believe that, Jesus that Jesus is the Son of God. Is the Son of God. 
And he died for my sins. And he died for my sins. And he raised him from the dead. And he raised him from the dead. On the third day. On the third day. Please forgive me of my sin. Please forgive me my sin. Wash and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Wash and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Make me a new creature. Make me a new creature. Let me be in the family of God. Let me be in the family of God. And write my name in the book of life. Write my name in the book of life. Show me a good church. Show me a good church where I can learn your word. Where I can learn your word and be baptized. And be baptized. And be filled with the Holy Ghost. And be filled with the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. And give me godly friends. And give me godly friends who can encourage me. Who can encourage me. And teach me. And teach me your ways. Your ways. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man, so let's pray. Let I want to pray for people father in the name of jesus i pray for every soul under the sound of my voice i pray mighty father concerning purity that purity holiness and righteousness may become our most prized possession i pray for those who are addicts who are bound with the shackles of sex life i pray heavenly father for those that are bound in masturbation bound in fornication adultery homosexuality or being lesbians or even being pedophiles whatever they are whatever sin has made them slaves i pray for them mighty father right now and we plead the blood of jesus over them and we break the power of witchcraft and sorcery and the cycles of sin the cycles of addiction the cycles of 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 delta force b the cycles of dopamine reward addiction I pray mighty father that they would be set free that they that they would be completely healed we cast out devils of fornication masturbation homosexuality we cast out pedophilia we cast out adultery we cast out pornography and porn addiction we cast them out in the name of Jesus and declare he whom the son has set free is free indeed we pray mighty father that there may be a replacement of pornography Amen. with a hunger for your word replace the appetite Amen. of immorality mm. fornication adultery masturbation mm. pedophilia it replace those appetites mm. with the appetite and the hunger the thirst for your word Amen. your word is truth we pray heavenly father that that insatiable appetite of your word would replace those old habits and drive them to your word instead of to porn drive them to your word instead of to masturbation or immorality or ungodliness of any kind Amen. we pray heavenly father that they would be totally and completely set free we break those chains we destroy those shackles by the mighty powerful name of Jesus and we plead the blood of Jesus upon their lives Amen. we declare there shall no evil befall them neither shall any plague come near their dwelling we cast out every devil that had been covenanting them and had been harvesting their energies we pray heavenly father that those energies may be restored your word says i will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten the years the palmer worm has mm. devoured the locust and the caterpillar mm. i pray that those years and the energies thereof may be restored your word says the thief if he be found must restore sevenfold he must give all the goods of his house so i pray mighty father that that which they lost that it may be restored sevenfold i pray for the restoration of stars the restoration of destinies the restoration of energy the restoration of inspiration in your word to do that which is right to live right i pray mighty father that their roots may grow deep in christ deep roots that they may not have a superficial form of christianity and when they hear it preached that they may get bored of it because they love the deep things of god so we call upon you mighty father that you may show to us deep and mighty things that we do not know so that we may become more intelligent yes. than our enemies mm. that we may become more intelligent than those that used to rule over us and treat us like their puppets mighty father i pray that you may take vengeance over pharaoh that had enslaved us for so many years i pray mighty father that your glory may be revealed in our lives that you may receive all the glory and all of the honor we pray mighty father that the sins of the bloodline may not enter into our children but that it will 
will stop with us. Mm. We pray that those sins of the bloodline, immorality, fornication, whether mm. it was masturbation, whether it was adultery, whether it was whatever mm. that we experienced, whatever we had to deal with, it, mm. it wants to pursue our children and it's oh, after God. our children. Yes. So we pray, oh. mighty Father, that these things would end with our generation yes. and that oh. the next generation will not inherit yes. wickedness and darkness, yes. but rather in, let them inherit light and life and righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost and love and normal rewards, normal reward systems, a mind that loves the little things mm. that you have given us, the things that you want us to be contented with. For godliness with contentment mm. is great gain. Okay. And so, mighty Father, we commit ourselves unto you. Mm that Jesus may be glorified in our lives. Amen. We pray that you may take us through the whole process of deliverance, whether we need to fast, mm. whether we need to pray, whether we need to denounce and renounce spirit wives and spirit husbands and mm. pray that every demon that was deposited as a result of our evil or mm. as a result of our sin mm. may be removed and replaced by your Holy Spirit and that we may be thoroughly purged by the fire of heaven mm. and that we may dwell, we may become secret place dwellers Amen. where the fire of the Holy Ghost rules over our lives and that strange fire Amen. cannot find expression in our lives any longer. Amen. We honor you, mighty Father. We bless your name. We commit our spirit, souls, and bodies unto you. Amen. Help us to live right, to live holy in a lifestyle that is good and acceptable in your sight. We honor you, mighty Father. We bless your name. We thank you for answers to prayer. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen and amen, amen and amen. Purity is the future. Yes, amen. and life is a battlefield. Amen. 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 Let's fight. Fight for your life. Amen. Fight for your future. Fight for your children. Fight for your heritage. Amen. Amen. And it's worth the fight. It's a good fight. The good fight is the one you win. Amen. Amen. May God's honor be upon you. Amen. As you seek God. Amen. And you entrust your lives in God's hands again. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Life is spiritual. And life is a battlefield. <laughs>